So the new opener is going to be Dan with a disgusting uh, coffee slurp. And me, see, oh. you got to put the mic closer. <laughs> yeah, eating this slice of pizza reminds me of fucking J- John. Uh, what's the guy's name running for president? I think uh, Kasich. He's got this thing now in New York where he thinks he'll look like a normal person <laughs> so, uh, if he eats a lot. And he's eating at a, at a <laughs> pace where you're going, dude, you look very odd. Like like the equivalent, like Howard Dean, the equivalent of Howard Dean going, uh, we're not going to stop there, Tom Parker. We're going to go to Then we're going to come to Pennsylvania. Then we're going go to Oregon. When it comes to Chicago, Michigan. it's got to be right now. Was right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow. He makes a, yeah, uh, uh, Howard Dean makes a sound in between white and house. <laughs> that is the devil. That is literally Cujo yeah. coming out of him. I'll tell you, Howard, uh, John Harkin, we're not going to stop there. We're going to go through Chicago. Then yeah. I'm going to come up back through Delaware again, and we're going to go back there. Then we're going to Tampa, steal some votes there. We're going to go back to Atlanta. They want to come back through yeah, Pennsylvania, come back through Chicago, come back to Chicago, come back to Washington. We're going to do it. <laughs> okay. He literally lost a presidential campaign. Yeah, right. that's right. Because, that's everyone, right. because of a scream. Everyone thought he was nuts. He's a dick. He, he seems like one. <laughs> and if you see the people in the background, that Harkin guy, all the people that introduce him, they're all smiling and clapping at the beginning of his speech. And then you slowly see them turn. Oh. To where, like you, like, you see years go by where you discover your son's a lunatic or oh, something. God. I never saw that. I gotta, now i got to look at that. Watch in the back. The it's people. like watching the, uh, in the scene in Goodfellas with Joe Pesci where those smiles just disappear well, on the rest of the other films. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, keep him here. Keep that motherfucker here. No, no. I mean, and, and the, the, the funny no. as a clown and you see the people. No, I know. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm just doing another. <laughs> I'm, I'm agreeing That's with it. you. The whole no, no, you got it all wrong, Tommy. Uh, uh, Anthony. He's a big boy. He's a big boy. Anthony knows what he's saying. You're right. Yeah, you're right. What are you, you're supposed to be doing this shit too, Henry. Yeah. <laughs> supposed to be doing this shit too. Henry. How great is that scene? You know, supposedly Pesci told Scorsese, "I'll do this part if uh, if you let me do that," because a guy did that to him once in a bar. Is that right? He yeah. made up that scene. Yeah, it was. Well, it happened to Pesci. Wow, that's amazing. I did not know and that. And that's right from Scorsese's mouth. Wow, that's so cool. Yeah, he said, "I," because wow. Pesci at the time. Had a lot of money from Home Alone, Gone Fish, and it was another gangster movie. And he's kind of, you know, I don't know if I want to play this guy type oh, yeah. of thing. And because uh, it wasn't a lot of money with Goodfellas, it's always like that labor of love thing. I suppose De Niro had a really, you know, they, they double teamed him and said, you got to do this. So uh, he said, look, uh, can we write in a bar scene where I do this thing that a guy did to me once? And, wow. And, uh, yeah. Wow, that's not in the original uh, script. That's amazing, you know, and it's. I remember seeing that in the movie theater. I went by myself to see that one. I, I now remember it. <laughs> I remember it vividly because I remember <laughs> saying to myself, "Like he's going to win an Oscar for this. This is unbelievable." Yeah, I've never been in the movies where I'm like looking at a scene right. and knowing this is going to be well epic. for me. Uh, uh, cabaret, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Joel. Uh, what's his face? Welcome, yeah. I try. Joel Gray. Joel right. Gray. Joel Gray Cabaret. See, I told you, get that uh, Liza's publicist here. He'd be like, oh, my God, you're right. I saw Patrick Stewart introduce Joel Gray. Joel once. Gray. <laughs> Joel Gray once. Uh, the biggest actory, most pathetic <laughs> introduction. I forget where it was, but he went, I considered this next role unplayable <laughs> until <laughs> until I saw this marvelous actor play it. Uh, Please welcome, as the ghost of Christmas past, <laughs> Mr. Joel Gray. <laughs> jo- Joel Gray beating out Pacino. Uh, Pacino. D- Duvall, James, James Conn. Duvall and James Conn yeah. for an Best Oscar that year. Actor. Joel Gray. So it's an embarrassment. Yep. And now, at 80, he came out of the closet. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Mr. You know Joel what? Gray. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to lie to you. I am gay. <laughs> gonna no lie kidding. To not going to lie to you. Jennifer is, uh, was a bit of a surprise. <laughs> That's the worst. I hate when gay guys have kids before I do. Well, well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well you know... Uh, <laughs> you know, so I've done something horribly wrong. Yeah, if Dan has a kid, what are you going to do? <laughs> uh, but I let you, they were introducing guys on stage after the play. I considered this next role unplayable until I saw this marvelous actor play it. Please welcome, as the ghost of Christmas past, Mr. Joel Gray. <laughs> <laughs> the ghost of Christmas past. <laughs> I've considered this role unplayable. Unplayable. Until, until now. Really? What's so difficult about that? <laughs> Ebenezer, I've come from 1938. <laughs> Remember you were a dick? <laughs> Remember how you Jewed everybody down that year? 
Remember uh, when he played that Chinese guy in that Remo Williams movie? Planet of the Apes. That was- <laughs> oh, that's Roddy McDowell. I get them confused. What did Everybody he do? What, what, what did he do? He played some Chinese mystic <laughs> guy. Mafia guy, yeah. He did? It, no, yeah. not Mafia. Or, he played like a mystic guy to teach. Oh, you're right. You're right. He's, he was like a Yoda. Mystic, yeah, yeah. He was yeah. like a Yoda. Mystic Pizza. Yeah. Called Remo Williams. Oh, Remo Williams with yeah. Fred Ward. Yeah, yes. with Fred Ward. I right. love Fred Ward. He's great. Yeah, that, I like that movie a lot, but it's weird that they use Joe. I mean, nowadays, you'd never get away with that. Like, yeah, we'll make Joe Gray Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought I knew. That's what he goes. That's right. You are number one jackass. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 gay guy. You had to take over Passover on that. Uh, side. <laughs> <laughs> I'm secretly a jackass. <laughs> I hope I go. My dad always told me that was his claim. He, they went to school together. Yeah, I went to school with Joe Gray. You did? <laughs> yeah. He didn't have the naked pool, did he? They no. <laughs> no, it was in Marine Park, uh, Brooklyn. Uh, that, that, no, everyone's clothed there. And the Madison High. Well, I, yeah, you know, it was me, Joel Gray. <laughs> <laughs> you mean JG, Joel. <laughs> hey, Joel, get over here. It's no wonder he had to wait until he was 80. I was like, I had to wait for the people in my neighborhood to die. <laughs> 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 I don't think they would have appreciated yeah, yeah. it. I guess I'm just different. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, everyone. Uh, that's hilarious. To my cock. <laughs> <laughs> Come, everyone, to a... Yeah, what's that? Think of it, the greatest day in his life is working with Liza Minnelli. Yeah. <laughs> I knew I should have just come out then, but I, oh, I just couldn't. Welcome, my friend, to a show that never ends. Come inside, <laughs> come inside. That's too manly. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, you know, I had a bunch of stuff on the debates, but then Dan starts talking. <laughs> Again, Dan, I don't know why Dan, knowing what we bust his chops about, and he clearly gets upset. It's almost like Because you weren't in here. Well, it was just me and Dave point, talking. Point, you know it could happen. <laughs> I mean, he has these stories that are just, and he doesn't, he doesn't, he's so innocent. It's unbelievable. I he's so innocent. He does everything, he does everything by the book and proper. Like we were walking in Hoboken and uh, and I'm walking by a car that's backing out of a spot. And Dan just goes, oh, that car is coming. <laughs> I go, so he'll wait. I go, I go no, it's not, I, 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 we can't, we can't wait. I go, well, I, he's not going to, of course he'll wait. I'm just walking in front of the fucking car. And then Dan just t- takes his backpack and jogs around like Liza Minnelli, <laughs> like around the car. I, I, he disappeared. I go, where are you? He goes, I'm just doing the right thing. I mean, <laughs> People he, are texting. They're not paying attention. I don't want you to get hit. Who's texting? People in the, the car. The driver. I was watching them, Dan. They were, the, the rear lights were on. The point is you, 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 take, you, take, you don't take risks that women don't take. <laughs> it's always like that. And then you're sitting on the couch. But, but uh, you know, it's all the stuff about the gay pool and the and, the, and Rick Steves. And, and so to, he starts telling, I don't know there how. There were half came, a million pe- people that went to high school. I don't in, know how it came to, up. In Chicago public high schools. And, <laughs> okay, we'll, come, we'll, give, we'll revisit that. I, uh, so, so he's like telling. Great. 500,000 students. He's in telling Dan, he's telling Dave a story. I walked into the middle of it and. <laughs> All I hear is Dan go, yeah, so, you know, uh, so we, we went to go see him, and they, you know, I went to see him after I heard him. And I go, what are you talking about? He goes, that comedian, I like this. I go, what comedian? So he's telling Dave, he doesn't know why, tell Dave a story. Who would tell the story? And he tells it as if everyone has these experiences. He goes, when I was about 20, I, I love this comedian. Uh, I didn't say that. Did I say that? What did you say? I said that I had... I collected comedy albums, and one of them was, uh, one of the albums that I collected was a guy named Woody Woodbury. (laughs) 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 And as we looked it up, Woody Woodbury, (laughs) he was the first stand-up comedian ever to get a gold record. (laughs) (laughs) No, he wasn't. (laughs) First comedian. No, he wasn't. First stand-up comedian. (laughs) He's bullshitting you. The internet is bullshitting you. <laughs> he was the first comedian to ever have the name Woody Woodbury. <laughs> oh. So, so what did you say? So, God, he must be good. Let me go by myself. Yeah, and and then he was on a TV. He was on a TV show, right? What was he on? Uh, no, he, oh yeah, he was in movies. He, did those, he was kind of, in those beach kind of movies. movies. Be- right, beach movies. He those. was the basis for Barry Sobel's character. <laughs> <Yeah>. right? <laughs> <laughs> so basically, Dan, he wore a bathing suit in movies. <laughs> Right, this guy named Woody Woodbury. So, well, right there, I was jealous there. of him because he had so, a bathing right, suit. So, you, Woody Woodbury is a comic <laughs> that wore bathing suits. I collected. And you went to go see him. I collected. You collected comedy albums. I, I, well, you just said that. Okay. It's like the Veloci paper. 
So, so, so you, you, you see, you're stabbing like you're lying. Like you know what? I, I, I messed up. I meant Woody Allen, not Woody Woodward. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure Woody Allen was a lot of beach. <laughs> I, I, so I, I, we, listen, Frankie Avalon. I, we, I got the girls are coming. Uh, they <laughs> kicked sand in my face. <laughs> that big, uh, that big schwarz over there. The radio show that I worked on, we had to go down to Florida for spring training. We did the White Sox first, and then we did right. the Cubs second. And so a, lot of, a lot of heterosexual guys uh, tear themselves away from a baseball game. <laughs> so see a comic they know no, from. <laughs> no, no. So we had, wait. Now you, have the I, most, you have the most manly I, thing ever. I, and you go, you know what? This is boring. Uh, wait, I remember now why we had. There's a Woody Woodbury concert. I remember now why we had the day off. They had everything we had a Friday. Sa- you're teeing them up. With we had Friday, <laughs> Saturday, Sunday off. Right. Here's what happened: on the Thursday, the two guys that I worked with, Steve Dahl and Gary Meyer, were we were broadcasting <laughs> from the Yankees, from the Yankees White Sox game yeah. in uh, Florida. Right. And the Yankees hadn't moved to their new stadium yet, and Steve Dahl was a heavy set man. He fell through the floor. And hurt his ankle. Right. So we got the next day off. So I'm driving around Florida. Right. And I see in around Fort Lauderdale. Oh, wait, this so your story is a fat guy fell through the floor <laughs> and you had the day off. And so I'm driving around and I said, a fat guy I saw that this a comedian dude. that I collect, that I, you know, had his album. You he saw was appearing at this club. <laughs> Don't you picture there's a big sign for Woody Woodbury and, <laughs> and the brakes just... <laughs> Woody feet, Woodbury feet, here feet in don't, Tampa? Feet <laughs> don't fail me now. <laughs> this Go is ahead. a dream come true. Go ahead. So I... So, so wait, so I, wait, I understand. So they canceled spring training because I fell We through. didn't do the show on Friday because Steve fell through the floor. <laughs> okay. They canceled spring this training because Woody Woodbury This would have been in major town. news. Major news. <laughs> So cut to you, just you take a car and just drive around. So we had a couple of days. You never off. drive, Dan. You, I haven't seen you drive once. You what are you a, talking about? You rented a car. You just, you, this morning well, you said what a great driver there, I was. Well, wasn't there a game? No, I didn't. Yes, you did. About the that. snowstorm. What? And I drove through the snowstorm. I was being sarcastic. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> so uh, Dan, I was being sarcastic. <laughs> but, 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 so wait a minute. So there weren't there games you could have gone to going on? I I if I don't know if there was a game that day. I'm not understanding. What Woody is, Woodbury was wait, wait, actually they don't play, in Tampa. There was a game that day. It was spring training. Spring training. They don't play the same team again. But they wait, don't. They play different. So teams what were we every supposed day. to do that day? Just a show about nothing. We were going to do a show. We were going to do a show. I think we're supposed to do two shows from the Yankees. We were covering the Woody Woodbury concert. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like the lies. As you keep asking, the lies get more. It's not like Woody Woodbury plays like four times a year. He's there like once a year, Ah, Artie. ah. Just, I mean, don't you get it? Yeah. The Cubs have won more in the last century than Woody Woodbury. (laughs) So, go ahead, Dan. This is great. So, So you go see see Woody Woodbury. I I was driving around Florida, Fort Lauderdale area, and I see Woody Woodbury. (laughs) What, What was your goal? Just to drive around Florida? No, to go to the beach or something. Well, why, why, why did you go to the beach? Because I saw that... This wait, wait, wait. The show was in between your hotel and the beach? The Woody Woodbury show was no, in between your hotel? No, I was driving hotel. around. I figured I'd do something well, instead of sitting in my hotel room. You said the beach. I had nothing to do. Right, so the be- what happened to the beach? There was nobody else? The, the only guy you knew fell through the floor? <laughs> <laughs> was I, Where was Gary? Where were the other people? Uh, I don't know what Gary was doing. I, do, I just spend 24-7 with those guys. I wanted to do something different. Right. I guarantee I know what the other guys weren't doing, seeing Woody Woodbury. Yeah. So you're driving to the beach, or, or you're just, what What else? The beach was one option. I was driving around Fort La- the Fort Lauderdale area. That's I wanted to see it. I'd never been thing. to Florida. Right. But you heard the pickings were good. <laughs> so you go there. How much money do you have on you? Not much. Right. Uh, oh, he was in Fort Lauderdale, not Tampa. Yeah, and so the Yankees weren't in Tampa yet. Yeah, so you're you're in Fort Lauderdale. That's even better. And how much money you got in your pocket? Oh, probably forty bucks. You got tight jeans on. <laughs> <laughs> what were you wearing? I'm serious. I don't know. What uh, were you wearing a bathing suit? No. Well, no, how, you no. going to the beach in jeans? He's not wearing a bathing. But suit. wait, he's going to the beach, Dan. What? Did you have a change of clothes for the beach? I don't. I don't remember. Well, why? Well, no, I wasn't going to go in the ocean. You're going to go on the beach in jeans? I was just probably going to go sit there and listen to music or something. I know I had a little rock man or whatever they, whatever we had back then. 
1980? Nothing. There was nothing invented. No, we didn't. We didn't. Sony make the walk. When did Sony make the Walkman? 1985. No, no, no I think no. It, it was earlier. It, it, we had it. In 1985. High I was in high school. 1985. No. It wasn't 1980. There was a. You're gonna go sit in your Walkman fully clothed jeans. I mean, that looks like a pedophile. Well, you know he doesn't know how to go to the beach in a bathing suit. Well, did you have headsets on? Yeah, yeah sure. Uh, so you had headsets? You look like Steve Cartman. <laughs> Bartman. Steve Bartman. Steve Bartman on the bench. Like, that's an odd looking. But you have a fleece on? No. <laughs> what shirt were you wearing? He was wearing a... We you were know, a sh- guys, I'm going to do it. It was probably <laughs> that... Uh, we were wearing a short sleeve shirt? Terry, it was the terry cloth type. Oh, I had those. I yeah. still do. What terry cloth? I wore the one ones about five stretch. years ago. My sister told me the to one, take it off. I look like a porn that, director. The ones that stretch... So you can tie up someone with it. I love those terry cloth shirts. So now, wait a minute. So you have a backpack like you always have, right? Yes, I had a backpack. Right. What's in the backpack? Rope. Chlorophyll. <laughs> <laughs> What's in the backpack? <laughs> Maybe it was a Woody Woodbury album. So to get, what? So I get an autograph. How how long after you leave the hotel <laughs> do you see Woody Woodbury? Do you see the advertisement? Is it, is it on a bench you see? He's not he's on a billboard. No, no. It was on the marquee of the bar. Oh, a bar he was playing at. Yeah. What was the name of the bar? I don't remember. Okay. So, so, uh, <laughs> Ramrod. <laughs> Waiting. I couldn't think of one. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, so you drive by a bar and you're driving around Florida and right. you go, there's a dark bar. I'll go in there instead of drive around Florida. Company. No, I said, there's, I wonder if it's the same Woody Woodbury that oh, was. Dan, there's another the, guy with that. I didn't know that. Well, Dan, there's you not another Google guy. it those days. Yeah, there's not another guy with so that. So I name. pull into the, I pull into the place and you see his. Promo picture on there. It's the same guy. I wonder did if you... it's the same Woody Woodbury. <laughs> <laughs> did you pull it now? At what point did you pull out? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. So you get the backpack. You have a rental car. You rented the car. Yes. You, I, Dan, I can't believe you rented a car. Dan, rented... you never. You don't care about cars. You don't drive. And how much did the car cost you? Prob- well, I think the com- I think WLS a- paid for oh, it. You got to have a big trunk. WLS. <laughs> <laughs> Run thorn with yeah, WLS. Hey, <laughs> hey, guess what? Guess what? Steve Jowl just fell through a floor again. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you guys. I know you're waiting for the Top 40 countdown, but guess what? Crazy news. Steve Jowl just fell through a floor. What are you with, Barry? All, and all guess weekend. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is a blessing in disguise because Steve Jowl fell through a floor again. <laughs> And I've got to reinforce those floors where Steve Dow is. <laughs> We've got tickets to Woody Woodbury this weekend. <laughs> let's, let's back up. Let's back up. How does he fall through the floor? Is he laying on a floor with that bedroom? Is he having sex? No. Or... He was. He fell through the, the press box floor. We were oh. doing the show. Oh, well, okay, okay, wait, Dan. Dan, Dan, Dan. Stop. I mean, come on. That would be, Dan, that would be a story in the history of broadcasting. He was doing a show. He was doing a and show. And he fell through the floor. His, yes. The, the floor onto broke what? underneath him. Onto what? No, he didn't fall like from the onto Scott Shannon. <laughs> <laughs> what did he fall? Did, the, did. the floor onto broke. The, the, did the floor broke. The floor broke. Yeah, no, and he didn't fall. Yeah, but his foot fell through the floor. <laughs> yeah, and he, he his leg is hanging his, out the ceiling. No, his leg was through the floor. <laughs> he fell right. onto his, the, his queen, one leg he fell onto the, the Queen of England who was <laughs> sitting there watching the game. <laughs> Wait a minute. So what is it? What's underneath him? The the dugout. I think there was like another. Part of the did, 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 Sant- did Ron Santos have his leg <laughs> amputated yet? Was it kind of a vicious joke? <laughs> Ron Santos' leg got <laughs> some but, uh, fan. Uh, some Jim Abbott uh, lost his arm. Yeah, some White Sox <laughs> fan is busted. J- Ron Santos here's a leg. <laughs> <laughs> That's tough. Did Ron have his leg by that point? Because yeah, that was, his leg. Oh, okay. Because that would have been a vicious joke on Steve Dahl's part. <laughs> disco demolition is one thing. Is this post disco demolition? Yes. So you yeah. guys are big and famous. Yes. And uh, so, is, where's his leg go? Where's it dangling? It falls through. It goes through the floor. What's, it, cra- what's it breaks through it? the floor. Okay. What's underneath you? I I think there was probably like a storage area or something, and he, it, this all happened on the air. He he was he was pacing around. Where is the, you know, you We were a, at the press box of the is Yankee there a Stadium. Tape of that? Yes, it was yeah, on the air. It all happened there, on yeah, the air. There's an audio tape. Well, we'll yeah. go get it. I don't I, believe this happened. It it happened. You, we get Gary on. Do Gary will a, talk about it. Do you have a tape of you? Did Gary do you have a tape of you pulling into the bar? <laughs> you so you so you so why couldn't he do the fucking show? It's a right. What are you doing? He, do he, he was pissed. So he what? didn't think he didn't like the the way that we were treated down there. So why the floor wasn't no scary? <laughs> yeah. Why were you treated? Why were you? Why were you? Because treated? we were not treated very well. They didn't want us to be doing the. 
they thought they were that we were too nuts to do. Uh, they wouldn't give us any press passes and stuff like that, and we had to like pull major strings. Really? Yeah. They didn't want us anywhere near the ball team, okay. especially after Disco Demolition. It was the White Sox. They didn't want us anywhere near there. The Bulls. So team. we had to go through the Yankees. The Yankees gave us press passes. The baseball team. Yes. The ball team. All right, so 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 he, he he's mad at the leg. How do you do? You help him get the leg back in. What happens? I think Gary. I think Gary and I both helped him. You had to push the leg back up. <laughs> we, yes, we you we helped him up. Steve Dahl's leg back up through the thing. Yes. And what is he saying at this point? Fuck. <laughs> fuck these people. What's Close to that. Everything but the word fuck. He was so just instead of visiting your boss, you go see Woody Woodburn. <laughs> well, I don't know what he was doing. <laughs> I don't know what he was doing. I'm sure that he was he was fine. He just didn't want to do the show the next day. At some point, Dan. You're going to admit this is all a lie. No. But it's a terrible lie. So at what point do you get up and go, well, I'll just rent a car? So the next day, we were not doing the show. Right. There was always some drama. Why don't you and Steve do the show? Huh? Why don't you and the other Gary? Guy? Yeah, yeah. Because Steve didn't want us to do the show without him. Why? Because uh, I think maybe he didn't want Gary to do the show on his own. Because he didn't Gary think Gary, good? He, would, he was afraid that Gary would be good. Yeah, but you'd be on the air, too. <laughs> <laughs> so you get the call so now they don't say let's go well, when do you go home after that we didn't we went to arizona the next week so we were gone for two weeks so you stayed how long much longer in florida for uh, two more days we didn't leave until sunday for for arizona for um scottsdale so that gave you and uh woody time to hang out like, <laughs> so i had a shopping? couple of days right so, so you get up and you rent the car right what kind of car is it Oh, I don't remember. Ford Granada. <laughs> I don't remember. And, and uh, now you're. How much long after you leave the hotel do you see the Woody Woodburn? It was very it, fifteen minutes, twenty minutes. That's a long time. You could have been in uh, yeah, Delray Beach by that point. <laughs> you, for, you, for, you see, this why it's bullshit. First, you said you wanted to go to the beach, <laughs> and then clearly that's. I fine. wanted to drive around. I'd never been to Florida. Well, what do you think you're gonna see? Uh, ocean. Okay. Well, you, I'm you on a go. lake. So you stop at the first dark bar. You find. No. The I, what are you talking about? Dan, we were, you're we've been there for a week. Did you see? Did you have you seen the ocean by that point? I'm sure that I had. Yeah. So why'd you get a car to go to the ocean? Because I wanted to see it again. I'd never been to the ocean. And it's, but Dan, so you stop to go into a dark bar. Yeah, uh, but for a guy that's been in a lot of beach movies, right? So he's seen the ocean. But, and but, he but, can but describe but it. What's in the point I'm getting to? What, what What is a bigger call to you than the ocean? What's calling you more than the ocean is? The comedy stylings of Woody Woodbury. <laughs> no, I mean, come starts on. with a C, though. <laughs> what's calling you? What, what, what's a bigger, louder voice in your head? Dan, I, Dan you want to see the ocean is, is drowned out by what? Comedy. Anyway. Com <laughs> <laughs> what did that one <laughs> So, comedy from Woody Woodburn? <laughs> you want to see wood? <laughs> okay, let's pretend. Let's put that. Let's suppress that more. Uh, okay, you're in there now. What happens? How so, many people so are at the minute? Uh, is, Woody, is he on yet, or you have to? <laughs> no, wait? he wasn't on yet. How much were the tickets? I don't remember. I hope anything more. Than it a was. Cent. It was one o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> what could he possibly? It was one o'clock in the afternoon. It was one o'clock in the so afternoon. Dan, so okay, the oh, was it a nice day? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful day in Florida. One yes. o'clock. Okay. How many people are seeing Woody Woodburn <laughs> at, a, at, a, at a matinee uh, in the ocean? There, uh, knowing Steve I made, leg is dangling. I, I made three. There were two other people in the in the bar. Okay. Now what what what, what were they what were they like? <laughs> they were, were they a couple or separate. Uh, I I don't a couple, remember. If they were a couple, then they'd be sitting together. I I don't remember. <laughs> What do you mean, don't remember? I don't remember if were they, they were sitting together or you remember there were two people and you don't know. What? There was a there was a guy and there was a girl. Oh, were they a couple? I, I you know no, what okay. indicates a couple. They were a couple. Okay, okay. They were well, a couple, what, what, but then okay, I'm sorry. I don't remember. You remember everything else? I, I don't remember if they were a couple. All or lies, insane lies. So so I mean I'm trying to figure out what you're covering up. So uh, <laughs> you're no by yourself now. Right. When does the show start? How long are you sitting there? Is, is it like Elvis? Does he make his audience wait? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, we were sitting there for a good 15... You're kidding me. 15 minutes. And he's rude to you? Yeah. Do you start chanting Woody? No. <laughs> now, no. did you drink? Were there two drink minimum? I think that I had a drink, yes. You don't remember the, what the charge was? $5, $10. 
What's his cut? The door? I don't get it. <laughs> what could he possibly make from this? I don't know. I he don't had know. to be a very depressed person at this point. When was his last movie before this? <laughs> I, I don't know. You don't know anything. <laughs> Terrible, man. You do, and you're, you're holding out on us. So, you, you, you have how many drinks? Uh, I probably had... I probably had two because I probably I think we I waited a while. Dirty Shirley Temples, <laughs> <laughs> a dirty temple. <laughs> what are you drinking back then? Um, probably Jack Daniels and, and Diet Coke. Whatever. Diet Coke. Yeah. yeah why f- Diet Coke? <laughs> what a fag. I mean, when you're when you're that age, the manliest why, why fucking drink ever, and he fags <laughs> it up. A Diet Coke. I didn't even know anybody drank that back then, like Jack and Diet Coke. Yeah, Jack Why did you Diet. choose Diet Coke? Or do you think that you didn't, but you just, you vividly remember that, he, though? The this, this thing that made him choose Diet Coke, same thing that made him choose going to see Woody Woodburn. <laughs> <laughs> I to... No, I just wouldn't have thought of that back then. I okay, think. so you have how many of those? Two. Now, the waitress had to be a very depressed person. <laughs> <laughs> She's working one o'clock. I think there was a limp. She, I think she had a limp. Of course she did. <laughs> She's working. One Picture o'clock. Dave. She's working one o'clock. This is one o'clock on a Tuesday. Oh yeah, on an afternoon. <laughs> Friday, a sunny day, a Friday, the beginning of her weekend. She's not exactly blowing the five o'clock whistle with uh, uh, the G one hundred. Everybody's working uh, for everybody. Everybody, we're gonna get Woody Woodberg tickets. It's five o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Woody Woodberg's wearing the five o'clock whistle. Woody Woodberg. Okay, so you have two drinks before he comes out. Yes. And so what happens? Lights go dark. <laughs> <laughs> Where the streets have no name by YouTube starts playing. There, a, a guy came on and was mumbling, and now I, I probably realized that it was probably Woody introducing himself. How do you know that? That's funny. I've just thought about it now. That's well, where well, Craig well, Kilburn well, got that from. Well, wait a minute. How do you think about it now? What, 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 did he? Did anyone leave the stage? No, no, nobody. No, so there was no had, opener. So it just, had to be him. Yeah. Just, why did uh, you, you just think of it now? Because it just came to me. What do you mean? You didn't figure that out then. I don't. I don't remember. Nobody left the stage, Dan. I so, was, huh? You just said nobody left the stage. He introduced himself. And yeah, but there were plenty of times when we did shows where Steve introduced himself off stage. Well, did, was he off stage, Dan? Yes, he did not. Yeah, so he that's was a off major stage. part of the right. story. So you heard somebody say Woody Woodbury, right? And then did <laughs> Woody any... Woodbury. So he stumbled. He stumbled onto the stage. We did. And he grabbed the mic, and he's. Was, Moving around like this, and like like jerking it, <laughs> and he had Did a drink in his hand, and he said he said, "Well, where's the drink? Use two hands for that." <laughs> he said, um, "What's up, all you crazy no, motherfucker?" Said, Dan's trying to make something up. No, he said, "Am I the <laughs> am I the only one drinking around here?" Yeah, am I the only one drinking around? And here? And then he he like paused and stopped and stopped and stopped and then just collapsed. He just fell on the floor. Right. And then what what happened? At what point does the hotel maid come in? And then we thought it was part of the act. So we like laughed and then you that, realized. You think that was his opener? Yes. <laughs> Why would he open with that? I don't know. I was that's 20 te- years old. Dan, that's a I'm sorry. Opener. I wasn't fucking as cool as you. Like I knew all the Dan, comedy Dan, 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 Let me tell you something. There's, there, there, there's so many parts of the story besides that that make you not as cool as anybody. <laughs> <laughs> You're at a Woody Woodburn kind of what did you think you were going to meet there, women? Like what? Did, no, I, mean, I wanted to see what it was like. He liked him. He had his albums. Remember? I had his album. <laughs> Dan, Dan, I had a heterosexual twenty-year-old. Kid. Here's what they do: you work at a radio station. You go to the nearest bar with like happy hour. You go. I was engaged. Oh, stop it, Dan! Don't you remember he told us that story of his friend? He says, "If you ever want to get laid, you play Woody Woodbury <laughs> with sign two. No, but Dan, like that's what I mean. Like, was your fiance with you? Of course not. No. Okay. No. So Dan, you go out. She was in college. Dan. Dan. You go out okay, and whatever. you just uh, you fucking you you live the life of a twenty year old man. You you try to find women. You find a happy. At least you talk to women. Well, I was gonna plan on talking. I certainly well, talked women to. Women at the Woody Woodburg. I mean, you know. Well, that. I you, wasn't gonna spend all day there. Well, well, Dan, you're drunk already. <laughs> I know you can't drink. Well, how long are you gonna spend there? And then go where? I could drink a lot more. The back Robert then. Preston show. <laughs> <laughs> was Robert Preston recreating Lajac Cosmo? <laughs> Dan, only a gay man would do this. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Dan, come on. <laughs> now, tonight's the night. If Let's I went it. to go see fucking Tommy Toon. No, no, no. Well, you, can... you essentially did of the sea. Yeah. Tommy Toon of the sea. <laughs> He's a Tommy Toon of the sea. <laughs> Tommy Toon of the so, sea. So the other guy and The me, other guy. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we walked up this stage. What, what about the other guy? We picked him up. Wait a minute. <laughs> we picked up Woody Woodbury. What's the girl doing at that point? Strapping on uh, black cops? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> ah, 
Fell for it again, Roy. <laughs> and the way she's going, it's going to get funny. <laughs> Dan, tonight's the night. You want me, do you want me to play a little song, Brian McKnight or something? <laughs> you have something to tell us, right? God made you tell Dave that story, and he made me come in early and hear it. Uh, a 20-year-old guy, Dan. That's such a disappointing story. You, you go because out, I wanted to see a comedian. Dan, you're on a radio show. You're 20 year, you, you're, you, you had the great luck of your, your enormous uh, boss fell through the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Such bullshit. Such bullshit. And, and, and a f- fiancé. Who's his fiancé, you had? <laughs> Who is your fiancé? <laughs> we talked about her the other day. What, what, the one you know from the third grade? Yes. Oh, from th- high school. Is third <laughs> we were engaged. <laughs> Hello, fresh <laughs> cow. <laughs> Whatever. What grade you got engaged in? Uh, we got engaged uh, with her third year in college. When so. he was 15 in the pool. <laughs> she was like, hello. Dan. <laughs> you we had, didn't go to the same high school. You never, uh, you never had intercourse with her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, and again, you do, you're making me you're making me the asshole here, dude. <laughs> because when if it's like a high pitch mic situation, you let me do this, and then one day you come out because you want sympathy, and I'm the asshole, and you're gonna get all the gay community. I have to go apologize, and I know what it's like. How about that day you get all the gay community to go? How about that day he bashed you about uh, Woody Woodstein? <laughs> I felt so bad for Dan. I, okay, twenty year old guy. And what do you do? What do you go back and tell all the guys who work at the station? God, what a great, sick, crazy afternoon. <laughs> What'd you guys do? What was a fucking happy hour over at the fucking... <laughs> yeah, man, these chicks were crazy. We're doing shots off her ass and everything. Yeah, what'd you do then? Uh, you know, what? we helped Woody Woodberg get to the hospital. <laughs> there were plenty of shots off her ass what you, moments wait, before that. What are you talking about? With who? Huh? With, with who? Shots off who's ass? With women. What, what you, not Dan, here's where he compensates. Yeah, no, I don't have to fucking compensate. Dan, Dan, wait, so by 20, year old, by 20 years old, you had all that out of your system? <laughs> I had had, I had, had a Boy, lot. Boy, I'll tell you, Art, I don't know about you, but I had my share. <laughs> my quote of shots over chicks ass, but we're done by the time I was 20. I said, guys, yeah. I'm 20. I've done this. Uh, it's time for me to, it's time to reap, time to sow. You guys do that. I'm going to go see a gay comedian. <laughs> He's not gay. <laughs> Just like you're not. He's not gay. What you got? You got you and that guy did that to a not gay guy. That's terrible. <laughs> when you made eye contact with the guy helping him, <laughs> didn't you think this guy must be thinking, "Why is he here?" <laughs> and you're thinking, "Why am I here? Why is he? Why are we all here?" Right? Yes. Aren't, aren't you suspicious of a man who's at one o'clock at that show? <laughs> well, I didn't think there were. When I walked in, I didn't think there were going to be two people in there. Dan, it's odd. It's you figure odd. that, you know, Fort Lauderdale is an older audience and maybe they... You... No, 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 no. It was the king of spring break at that point. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dan, like, a, a yards from you, there was a spring break party <laughs> with, like, real, like, fucking well, sex. Well, I... And you had, of course, you had I that like system. I like to do different things and name, I don't like to be other, around crowds. Name to, okay. Well, you, well, apparently you did because you had a ton of times with a shot, with the shots off the ass alone in a room. <laughs> Everything contradicts itself. I, you know, I've just been doing some research, and Woody Woodbury was Kennedy's favorite comedian. <laughs> it was Vaughn Meter, not Woody uh, Woodbury. Oh, sorry, I get the mix. Vaughn Meter. <laughs> so, so Dan, again, you don't like crowds, but you've had a bunch of shots off the ass. Name two times you did a shot off an ass. Uh, I did one at the. A uh, lot worse. The, I'm not going to talk about it. I don't okay. want to talk about it. So you had your fill. <laughs> Just, just please admit it. You're a worse liar than the Clintons. <laughs> you don't have to be gay in the story because you're probably not gay. But I'm just saying, why are you lying about the rest of the story? It's odd. What do you tell other people you did that afternoon when they ask you what you do with the day off? Because, you know, do you high five guys and go, hey, man, we had that great day off because you fell through the roof? <laughs> and what do you say to people? About what? About what you, what'd, they, what'd you do today? We had a day off. Everyone's probably asking. Well, what I talked about it on Monday. I talked about when we went, got to Arizona, I told the story about Woody and Woodbury. W- and they thought that was not an abnormal story. I'm, you know, you Steve, oh, st- sure. Steve did. So why are you mad at me for doing it? I'm not mad at you. <laughs> well, you clearly look mad. 
Huh? It, it you was look good bad. radio back in 1980, yeah. and it's good radio now. It's not even good radio. It's, it's beyond it. It's This is so fascinating. This is like a level of psychiatry. I can't even tell you. This is Freudian. I've never met someone like Dan, ever. It's fascinating. And I'm saying that in a positive way. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's a very he's a loyal, no, listen, he's a loyal friend. He is. He's very loyal. But, but I think he's, he's, there's something. He's so afraid of something. <laughs> there's nothing. I'm and I think of. it's his dad's will. <laughs> <laughs> As it getting cut out. <laughs> Does your father know about that story? Uh, no. Of I, course not. No. Because you're in the will. <laughs> So to, wh where do you bring uh, Woody, Woody, Flimsy Woody? Where do you bring his body? We put him, we put him back on. <laughs> where there, do you bring his bloody body? There was a chair. There was a chair right next to the stage. And we put, brought, put the chair up. there was a chair up. in the audience? <laughs> <laughs> there was a bunch of chairs right in we front of the stage. We put the chair up on the stage. <laughs> we, we plopped him in the chair and we left. Oh. I didn't even ask for my money back. Come on. And did, what did you say to the other guy? Did the guy, well, I, I, did the girl join you or did the girl in the audience? Do I don't, I don't remember what they did. So they, wait, so did she join her? No, it was just me and the other guy. So the, she, they could have been a, t a couple. She left. That's rude. <laughs> no, she stayed. She was there. We were all kind of shocked that he he passed out. Well, D of course, Dan, <laughs> it's a comic you're seeing who passed out <laughs> during his first joke, according to you. <laughs> he didn't even, get that, he didn't get a joke out. Well, you said that you thought that was his first. I don't joke. think, that, and I don't think there was a cover, so maybe that's why I just left. So I just, passing out for twenty minutes was his first joke. <laughs> <laughs> then they put him on the chair, and then he heard the music go. Did 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 it? Take my fucking people. No my fucking way. Okay, I, I never do this because Twitter is a crazy land of gutter snipes. I'm encouraging feedback on this. Oh, I, I want to know what you people think about this. <laughs> I want to know if you people think I'm safe. So get your Woody Woodbury albums out, <laughs> and let's see what you've got to say. <laughs> Hello, love, this is Ryan Lundy, and that's right, we got Woody Woodbury is over at the fucking mine shaft. It's a one o'clock on a sunny Friday at the mine shaft, and what are you going to do? Yeah, right next to it is a Holiday Inn with a pool there filled with nothing but young pussy. And if you hate young pussy, you're going to want to go to the mine shaft. <laughs> If, hey, if you're 20 years old, <laughs> you if you're 20 years old and you work for a big radio station in Chicago and you happen to get the day off because your obese fucking boss <laughs> fell, through a, fell through a roof, uh, <laughs> if you're 20, and you know what, and you've had all of the fucking out of your system already, if you've been wrung of every piece of comedy, you've done every shot of it, at 20 years old, you want to go to the dark mind chat bar. And watch Woody Woodbury pass out. What if Woodbury, Woody Woodbury was on their radio show that day? Like, we got Woody Woodbury here today. And he's like, this. so you're playing uh, to, that's, uh, tonight. At, <laughs> wait, is, is that a misprint? One o'clock? No, it is not a misprint. It is one o'clock in the afternoon. Yes. The next day, got some terrible news about Woody Woodbury. <laughs> our condolences. Our condolences go out to the, the people. <laughs> Apparently, our, but, but, guess, but guess who was right on the spot? While the rest of you assholes were partying. <laughs> Well, the rest of you guys are doing shots of young pussy's asses. <laughs> Guess what moral guy who works for us was doing? He could have gone there, but he but he did it. He, he did a shot off a chick's stomach once, and he can't even tell us about it. It was that. It was that shameful. He has a, he has a problem telling the heterosexual stories. <laughs> so so he he basically goes in the mine shaft, and he was right place, right time. Because Woody Woodbury decided it was time to check out. <laughs> check out of the hotel known as comedy. <laughs> And there was another guy in the audience who happened to be there. We don't know his story. Apparently, the CIA has been asking questions about him. And the woman in the audience apparently is always there. She hasn't left for three years. <laughs> There's always a woman there. And, uh, yeah, the waitress. Tough story there. But Dan springs into action and gives mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation to Woody Woodbury. And then, apparently, Dan stopped by Woody Woodbury's hotel tonight. And he was, yeah. even though he was conscious, attempted to give mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. What was the what was the show with the paramedics? Uh, emergency one. Emergency. Yeah. Oh, that's, I was like a paramedic yeah. on the spot. Yeah, yeah, with pink uh, pink uh, <laughs> trucks. One out of twelve. One out of twelve. <laughs> Dan, see the gay man. <laughs> <laughs> Breathe life into his body. That's I, right. So, know, having a hand for Dan while you were partying. Did you do the show the next day? The radio no, show. No, Saturday and Sunday. It was Saturday. That was a Friday. Oh, Saturday, was we had Saturday in Air, in uh, Florida, and then Sunday we left for Cubs spring training in Arizona. It's like, if, like, why? 
you know, I thought maybe you would have had him as a guest on the show. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite comedian is playing here. Let's have yeah. him as a guest. Yeah, guess who's got some gay comedian to stank <laughs> on the download? <laughs> So what kind of comedy do you do? And you're like, what kind of, what's your material? Like, well, my, well first, yeah. <laughs> my first joke. <laughs> a young, I picture young Dan Filato going, oh my God, we've got to get him on the chair. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're 20 years old. Why are you here? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm a fan of comedy. What? Oh, yeah, I'm a fan of comedy. Whatever. <laughs> now, what are you like the White Sox? Don't you? I mean, that's <laughs> what we're all here. Right? I like baseball, but <laughs> I don't <laughs> I don't know. The White Sox is from Chicago, right? How <laughs> <laughs> about me? I, like, <laughs> I Dan just told if me I'd that. seen Paul Lynn, maybe I could see you. <laughs> Dan just told me that the White, Sox, the White Sox made a homer. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody, our own Dan Falato got in some bad shaft action. <laughs> so, Woody, tell us, what's it like working with Annette? <laughs> uh, wonderful. Big That's titties. right. That's right. Big titties. Did you see the... Uh, <laughs> The black uh, porn star based on Annette Kunichello. <laughs> <laughs> Her and Nick Thune. Annette Kunichello next. Not Kunichello, because she's the black porn star based on. She's in the, the Black Beach movies. Annette <laughs> Kunichello. She's in the Black Beach movies. <laughs> the Black Beach movies. <laughs> Frankie Avamulayan. <laughs> Frankie Avamula John <laughs> and Annette Cunicello. <laughs> Beach ghetto boys. Beach boys in the hood. <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice if we shot you? Doesn't that could the cello and Frankie Bullinja? Frankie Ava Bullinja. Ava Bullinja. Ava Bullinja. And Woody Woodbury. And Woody Woodbury's new life partner, Dan Pilato. How'd you guys meet? Well, let's just say when you give a mouth to mouth resuscitation, sometimes it's okay to use the tongue. <laughs> <laughs> you imagine like a, I can't even pronounce that. Do it again. Frank Avalon Yam. I'm just saying Worcester Shire Shire Shire. That's tough. How about uh, Avalon? Av Frank Avalon I can't even say it. So great. <laughs> that Kuna Chow. <laughs> <laughs> and that too soon a cello. <laughs> And that Nick through the cello. Nick through the cello. It's alternative hip smart comedy on the beach. <laughs> Nick through the cello. <laughs> if you want your beach comedy to be smart <laughs> and talk about politics and call Trump Hitler, like that, because that's so brave. <laughs> yeah, you'll want Nick Nick through the cello. <laughs> And Frankie have a bullet job. <laughs> and Mr. Tyus here's one. <laughs> Dan is just, imagine that. Like, I was struggling to think, what am I going to talk about? I'm looking at the stories. <laughs> and Dan just you fucking. You can talk about Woody Allen and Martha Stewart. <laughs> Enough about Woody. <laughs> Dan just shits out a fucking <laughs> stool of radio gold. <laughs> a bloody stool of radio <laughs> platinum. <laughs> uh, how come I didn't know the fucking. The Woody Woodberg story. <laughs> Woody Woodbury. Yeah, but I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. How did you not know he was one of his favorite comics? That he he wasn't album? one of my favorites. You said he had his album. I had. A, I'm trying I to think. All I'm trying to think albums. of what. I'm trying to think. If I had the day off at 20 years old on a sunny Friday <laughs> in Fort Lauderdale. I probably okay, I, I, I'm trying to think what would have taken me away from going to a happy hour with broads. I'm trying to think what would have taken me away. Uh, what what act would have to be at the mine shaft? <laughs> At one o'clock, it would have to be Springsteen doing all of his first three albums. Acoustic. No, even then, I'd go. Bruce, you want to just leave and just go to the happy hour? You do something. Gary Valentine, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it would have to be Nick Thune's first album. Like. It have to be Sharon Houston opening for Nick Thune. <laughs> Sharon Houston. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it was a sparse crowd, so Nick wasn't getting <laughs> Nick wasn't getting the response he's used to. <laughs> 
<laughs> she said stuttering John stunk. <laughs> I know, that's all I keep thinking about. You know what? It's the worst. Smells. You know what? I she gave them the worst review <laughs> a group of human beings can have. Like, like uh, they like, let her have it on. G- yeah, I know. Gino has been doing stand up for thirty five years. She called him an open micer. <laughs> and yeah, and and, uh, and Bachetti, she just said, you know, he was on stage for thirty seconds and just mumbled. And you know, she called a retard <laughs> retarded, <laughs> which is very rude unless you see his act. Machete was so unfunny, she felt it was okay to call a retard retarded. <laughs> and she said Stuttering John was unfunny and he stunk. <laughs> not what do you mean he was bad comedy? No, he had body odor. How do you not love Sharon Houston? Mm. That's a review. That's scathing. Great. <laughs> that's Frank Vincent of the New York Times saying your play's closed. <laughs> <laughs> that's like Rosie O'Donnell and Taboo. <laughs> well, then a lot of the people, like they tried to show pictures of that, see, there's actual people here. They had a couple, like two people on the side. Nah. <laughs> no, there was a picture. Someone, Rick, someone sent me a picture. One of the uh, guys from our, who are fans of ours said, "Art, this says it all," and it was Pachetti on stage. The entire first four chairs empty, like right in front oh, of him. I did see. I didn't see that one. They right, right to, in front of him. Okay. Because they have pictures from different angles, so it makes it look like there's more people. But that's actually known as the Woody Woodbury rule. You, need to, <laughs> <laughs> you have to have an empty chair in case you piss, so Dan can grab it. It's the that's first what, rule you learn in comedy. That's a tribute so to Woody Wood, That's a Woody Woodbury rule. Dan had a flat of Congress. Oh, the funny thing is, Dan, I think I would have done the same thing. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. Yeah, but you know, why, you. you know why you wouldn't have, Dave? Because you wouldn't have been there. You would have uh, been a happy hour. I don't know. You know, I used to go, you know. Oh, Not at 1 comic, o'clock in know. the afternoon. I wanted it, to Dan, be a comedian. Dan, Dan, they fucking have. Sh- it's nonstop partying. You're spring training. It's spring break. It's nonstop. But you don't know. Because you're anti all that. You're the opposite. I'm sure that we probably had tickets to the game, whatever game was going on that day. I just didn't want to go. Yeah, well, well, why? It's huh? baseball. Yeah, that out of your Because I'm not a White Sox fan or an American League fan. But you're a fan of I Cox. I like the Cubs. Any weather, you're a fan of Cock. <laughs> I'm a National League fan. You like the Cubs? <laughs> you're a National League fan, you swing both ways. It's <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dave. Thank you for admitting that. Uh, admitting what? That he would have gone. I probably would. What have. about Sunday, my architect? Let me tell you something. You <laughs> he would have gone the same way. These, you, you, you know, I was being sarcastic, and you think these people really swam naked? They're fucking with you. <laughs> yeah. Dave would not have. Been, I don't know. I'm trying to. Think. He would have been like, hungry, sli- oversleep for the night. You doing being a guy, a twenty year old guy, you're asleep. You're, you sleep till three in the afternoon because you you know you get up and you make fun of people. You know, uh, I do that, but when I was in a different city, I don't think it was cool enough to go out. Like, I think if I not about knew there cool. was like a comic that maybe I could talk to and be like, what's it like doing comedy or whatever, you know, because we wanted to be comics. Woody Woodbarrow you know? would be the guy. <laughs> I don't think he'd be the guy, but I mean, I like, don't know. Who's your favorite comic growing up? I, it was Rodney. So if he was in a bathing suit on the <laughs> beach doing that act, <laughs> I'd probably go. <laughs> I can't deny it's Rodney. What if he disintegrated on stage? Well, that's actually believable. Yeah, right. I mean, it is. Dan, he was uh, Rodney. He was how greatest. long have we been talking now for this one? I, I think this is an hour. <laughs> Another hour. So we got two shows. <clears throat> you know, I met Rod- Woody Woodbury. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you. I got to say. <laughs> uh, Woody Woodbury is okay. I, I stole you, I think, a lot of his act. <laughs> I think Dan swings from the other side. That guy's a drunk. <laughs> <laughs> that guy disintegrates. I'll show stage. you what a drunk's like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Dan, you know what? I'm going to have to take at least a break. But. I'm gonna give you one more chance. Is there something you want to tell me? In the no, audience? there's nothing. I, want to tell I think you. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to call it a, All right. a myself. I mean, that's okay, right? Of course. Yes. <laughs> I had a really good time. Do you want to? Uh, do you want to know if uh, Woody Woodbury's performing anywhere? Anyway? <laughs> <laughs> of course, I. He's, he's 92. Still, he's, still he is, he's still performing. Right? He's still performing. Probably saved. We his looked life. him up. Probably saved his life that night. Maybe. Well, you want to go see him? Where's the show? Fort Lauderdale. Uh, can he oh, call in? in? Okay. Can he call into the podcast? I. I I'll try and get home over the weekend. It's not uh, a bad idea. Imagine though. he goes, he doesn't even know. We, that's how he knows. Goes, I got a story about a time <laughs> I faked passing out <laughs> on stage. Just so I could get mouth to mouth. My gaydar was <laughs> pinned at red. Pinned at red. And uh, I said, well, it's probably just a misfunction. Uh, <laughs> and then who shows up on a beautiful Friday afternoon? Steve Bartman. Yeah, Steve Bartman. <laughs> With headsets on. <laughs> you, did you realize how scared people get when you look like that? That's you, a backpack, headsets. It, you got on mesh clothes. 
Jeeves on a scolding yeah, hop. Yeah, because people really cared about that back in 1980 You're in or Marlins territory. Yeah, damn, they cared <laughs> about it. There was no Marlins <laughs> back then. They cared about it. No, they didn't. You looked odd. <laughs> I did not look did you, odd. Did you have long sleeve shirts on? <laughs> no, I told I had that I had so that people saw your hair. That uh towel type Terry shirt. Club, yeah. Terry Clark. Was it long sleeve too. or short sleeve? Short sleeve. So what what was your hair as thick those. as it is now? It's it was very it was very curly and thick. No, I mean your hair, arm hair. Uh yeah, uh it was yes. Really bad. Yeah, cuz around t- oh. it got 18 19, that's when it like We went shorts. Uh pro- yeah, I'm sure I was. So those yellow calves. <laughs> Were your calves ever is that hairy? No, they're not. Were your knees hairy? No. Do you, do you know that really creepy hair you have on your toes? <laughs> you, I mean, like down the shore, Dan takes his feet. I can't believe I had a camera crew over there, the man, the man cave people. And Dan comes down from his enormous room he gave him for free. <laughs> and, and he's got yellow feet that, that are sticking to the floor. Like the, that is the, not the, the Italian tile I had imported. You're like, 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 you know. And I looked down at his toes, and he's got that ball of hair on top of his toes. I couldn't eat an omelet for three days. <laughs> like I that Mario Lopez toe fungus? Yeah, well, I, no, not even fungus. But I imagined his toe hair on my eggs. <laughs> Ew, oh. For three days, I couldn't eat. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, now we know that's a lie. Well, well I just... Uh, <laughs> I because see. he doesn't get up for breakfast. See, there's a fat joke. Well, <laughs> well, well he doesn't get up for breakfast. What does that mean? <laughs> What does that even mean? Because you sleep till one or two o'clock at Tom's River. You well, know what, guys? I'm going to like, listen, listen. I've been good. I'm listen, I'm yelling at me. At Tom's, I, what is that? Like, I mean, you're such a wife. You know you sleep till two o'clock at Tom's River. <laughs> There's nothing that comes out of your mouth that's heterosexual. <laughs> it's relaxing down there. There's nothing that goes in your mouth that's heterosexual. All right. <laughs> this is too easy at this point. Dan, thank you, man. I get your MVP. This is unbelievable. <laughs> Dan, that's an order. You're on the air. Dan with the very anxious point. <laughs> that is so disconcerting. That Stand by. You're very, no, you are. You're very efficient. We're so different. He's so efficient. Uh, he just, you know, he lives life right. You know what I mean? It's like, like Dan's one of these guys where if you, like he's like to the government again, look at my shit. You know, he's got, uh, you know, he says, ah, oh, stop my, you know, uh, my, my wife. Or texting back and forth like like sweet nothings, and I get it. We all but we all have that. FYI, I, I took you to lunch forty times. We talked about business last year, just so you know. Forty? No, you didn't. <laughs> no, you didn't. Forty just times. Just in case the IRS asks. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were, that was a real number. Because we got into a fight the other day, and Dan goes, "I bought you plenty of lunches." It's like not even one. I can't. Remember. Oh, I can't remember one. I mean, honestly, I should buy you lunch, but we have a good deal going on here. You know, you 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 earn your keep. <laughs> Thank you. you. You you produce the show amazingly, and there's always hot towels. <laughs> and Dan does the thing with meatballs. We get Direct TV, man. <laughs> I mean Direct TV, Jesus <laughs> Christ, Fresh Direct. There's a sketch, Fresh Direct TV. <laughs> Ken Cole brings over a salad. Hi, it's Fresh Direct TV. <laughs> it's Fresh Direct TV, and uh, yes. Chris Long has been in charge. They took him off Audience Network. <laughs> the uh, the third uh, drama, hour long drama that cost two billion dollars a month, wasn't getting enough ratings. <laughs> Remember those dramas? Ugh. Those dramas. Chris Long would say, like Shane would go and say, "We have to pr- we have to promote this. <laughs> promote what? Uh, it's a it's a you know, the Audience Network. It's really big. What's big? <laughs> it's Chris Long's baby. <laughs> what? It's a drama." It's a drama. What what did they have on it? Was like that one with the hot the chick who Bushetti thought liked them. Fandy Newton. What yeah, what was that show? Oh, uh, <laughs> Fandy Newton. <laughs> what did they buy her? <laughs> Fandy Newton. <laughs> it sounds like a gay guy saying Sandy Newton. <laughs> it's Fandy Newton. It's Nick Thune. It's Van, it's Nick Thune. <laughs> what was that? Oh my god! Uh, I the, can't remember. It was. You know, I think yeah. here's what I think. The audience network is probably. A, a money laundering thing. <laughs> no. You know what I mean? Like, it wasn't supposed to make money. Like, right. who, who gives me a show? I mean, yeah, I, again, I, I think the show, listen, the Audio Lang show, and there's people who still tweet, enough people where they're onto something that said it was the most special show ever. There was nothing like it. We loved it. And it was, your, some guy said, you know, Stern, I don't think Stern was your best work. Uh, the direct TV show was your best work. And it was, it was very different. It, and it was fun. 
those two uh, those two twin broads i mean like they were hot and they just were terrible at what they did they, you know <laughs> Like very sweet girl. I mean, especially the the, the quiet one. I don't want to forget her name, but no, Liz, Liz and Marie. Liz and Marie. I know their names. I mean, that's the kind of show it was. And God bless Chris Long. He was a good boss in the sense he got behind everything. Those chicks called and they said we're fans. Mm. Two months into the show, and they said we're hot blondes, we're twins, and we looked them up. They're on the Amazing Race. Are they were the Amazing Race? They're part of the Amazing Race. Their father was the Amazing Race. I don't know something about the Amazing Race. <laughs> they were on that show, and we looked at them. We're like, yeah, they're hot. Actually, it looked kind of heavy on the show. <laughs> right? They were heavy set. Yes. But they lost some weight. And they were in Chicago. And I said to them on the air, and this is the innovator radar I'm, I'm known for. I said, you be here tomorrow at 5 o'clock. Take a plane from Chicago, two-hour flight. Be here tomorrow at 5 o'clock, you, yeah, and we'll audition you. If you do well, you'll work for the show. We'll get you paid. We want to work in New York. Oh, my God. <laughs> You know, and of course they thought we were just a stepping stone. These are hot chicks thinking that they, they thought, I guess they were like, you know, good on camera. And they, they were sweet, but they needed work. I mean, sometimes they would ask a question and they weren't even on mic. They keep the mic at the guy's mouth and they'd ask the question like, like on the red carpet, like, like the mic would not be on their mouth. The mic would be on the mouth of wherever they're inter interviewing. Like they go, so you're Jim Brown. What is that? What's, what do you do? Uh, and then, and then while they were answering, they'd bring the mic back to them. Yeah. So you'd hear, I'll run it back. What is that? So you never heard the interview. They needed to take some classes before they hit. They did their talk show yeah. that they were planning. They needed to get out of their own private Idaho, which was a privileged life. Where, you know, and, and, and where, where they're always right. Any, any pushback on their opinions, like, Whatever. <laughs> I guess you're the one with the four houses. And it was as their boss. I would ask them how their weekend was. They'd say, oh, we were at the mansion in the Hamptons. And, and, you know, and I go, you know what? They go, what was your like, uh, uh, you know, uh, weekend like art? I was at an Indian casino outside of Cleveland <laughs> doing stand up with, with Tim Sullivan. <laughs> like I'm working to try to get your life. <laughs> you already have the life I'm trying to get. And you work for me. <laughs> Whatever. We lost our dog today. Remember that the dog? Oh, yeah, I remember. <laughs> and I, I got to tell you what, they 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 had an apartment that they're in. Had an, I won't say the exact part of town because I'll be respectful. But I used to drive them home at night, and for because it was one a.m. and I didn't like them taking a cab. I felt responsible for them in a way. And they had an aunt who had a very big job at a very big place in uh, Manhattan, but they weren't rich, <laughs> like Dan. <laughs> Yeah, okay. rich people hide their money. See what Dan just did? They hide it. I'm not good at. I'm you know, I wear it on my sleeve every time I get a check because <laughs> I earn my money. I'm first generation. Uh huh. Yeah. Dan is second. Dan knows etiquette. I'm an immigrant. What are you talking about? So is Vanderbilt. Immigrant, you break. See, but Dan is trained. Don't talk about money. <laughs> oh, it's like the mafia. You know, you say you're in it. Dan has been trained. Mm -hmm. He's he's first generation wealth. No, he's second generation. Well, in other words, like his father's went out of work. And my kids will be like, damn. Yeah. Or the twins. That's why you got along with them. St instead of going to the Hamptons tomorrow, I'll be going to the auto show. But that is your <laughs> decision. I think you want to, you, you're, you're, in other words, you feel so guilty with this wealth. <laughs> oh, you do, because you see someone like me has to work hard. And I'm, oh, I'm, and I'm smarter and I'm more talented. And I deserve it more. Because mm -hmm. I've had it harder in life. <laughs> You've been given things. Yeah, uh -huh. and, uh, and you know, well, you were given things. Yeah, and, and, like car, you were given a Pontiac and, Ventura for I, one I year. Don't quantify. <laughs> I got nothing. Yeah. So uh, what do you mean? Okay, I got nothing. What are you laughing at? <laughs> you don't think I've had it harder in life than you? A million times harder. <laughs> well, the circumstances. Dan, of, yeah. A million. Yeah, times you're right. Harder. You're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> Started with one welfare. I, 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 I'm just a much more impressive human being in every way. I, I am. I mean, I'm a junkie. That's my problem. That that's my that's my uh, my cross to bear. But in every other way, I'm more impressive. I mean, you know, you, you're pushing back on that. But you no, I didn't say anything. Okay, well, just admit it. I admit it. Admit you, that's why you, you hate me. You had a, <laughs> I do not hate you. You've you've had a much harder life. Right. Well, and, and I can't and, imagine. I don't think. I think that I would probably handle it. Well, no, well, you, you, you wouldn't be a junkie. 
you know, I'm a, I don't, I'm, you don't I'm a drug addict. I'm a drug addict. You don't know that. You're not an addict. You're, I know, I can tell you're not. You're not. You're an efficient person. You would, you would handle it. I mean, you never would have made the money I made. <laughs> but you hit the lottery room. But, uh, dude, you're going to make more money than me in one check when somebody dies. <laughs> and I think Dan looks at me and goes, you know, this guy is uh, pissing me off because yeah. he's such an impressive person. <laughs> And, uh, and you know, I started out uh, as a rich kid with opportunity. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it, it makes me mad. There's anger. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and he bonds with the people like the twins. Now, the twins, at least Dan, you know, he overcome it. Like, he's so modest that he tries to, he lives the life of a poor person. He pretends. He doesn't go to the Hamptons or anything like that. And, and, and I, I applaud you for that. <laughs> I do. You're like Springsteen's kid who wants to be a fireman. You know, <laughs> very impressive. You don't take the wealth. But the twins, my God, they spit it in your face. And when I dropped them off, the first week at their Richie hotel, uh, Richie apartment, I had, I had to take a leak. Not a shit. I'm their boss. I'm in a Range Rover. I'm a celebrity. They know me. I said, can I run up and take a leak real quick? Shane was with me, I think. Yeah. No, it was me. It was you? You were yeah. with me? Yes. Yeah, I'm sorry. I get them confused. Thank you. I'm sorry. Wow. I'm kidding. You're you're both effeminate. <laughs> so uh I knew it was you stopping Dan. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, you remember this? Yes. You're not backing me uh, up. I because you're with them. <laughs> yeah. I, I said I that. was horrified. That Where'd they would you not, I said yeah. I said, you know what, I gotta take a look. I'm sorry, just uh, real quick. Uh <laughs> you can't do that. Why? Well, we don't want you in the apartment. We're not allowed to have you in the apartment. Yeah. <laughs> and they're, 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 they're waspy. Uh, you know, the, 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 and, uh, you know, they pretend that they, I'm not allowed. I'm one of, I'm the common folk. Like, that's when I really felt it wash over me. Like, wow. I never experienced that kind of discrimination before. I'm your boss, but I'm not a, as good a human being as you. I'm not, I'm not a blue blood. Oh, the disgusting man you work for. I did it on the air. We, I, did it, I did an impression of it on the yeah. air. Oh, that disgusting man. That fat slob you work for. I thought they were joking. Yeah. I thought they were joking that they would not let you up. Yeah. I go, okay. Would have been the best joke they ever made. <laughs> so we had to drive two blocks, and I pissed. I, I, that's when I first learned I had diabetes. That's how terrible it was. But when I when I didn't know I had diabetes, I started urinating every two seconds. I was I I, I left my marker on the city like a coyote. <laughs> no. Dan was with me sometimes. I peed all over Manhattan. Yeah, the five the tri state area actually, like a coyote. I would pull over like in traffic, and Dan would go, "Oh God." <laughs> Dan would look at the traffic, and there was no warning. Right. It just all of a sudden we were going. We went from seventy to twenty. Well, guess what, Dan? <laughs> That's diabetes. I'm living with it. You're not. And, uh, you know, yeah, they went, these gutter snipes wouldn't let me in to, to their apartment. To, you know, what what the hell? Jerry. They would get to work and not even take their coat off. That's how much they don't want to be there. They complain about a job three hours a night. We don't know. <laughs> and then I did my brilliant bit, Dan Deardorff Abbey. <laughs> Deardorff Abbey. Dan Deardorff is Dear Abbey. I mean, it's, I mean, where's the where's the Peabody? <laughs> Listen, superb, superb defense. This is Dan Deardorff. This is Deardorff Abbey. The first letter comes from Liz in Chicago. And Chicago had a superb, superb defense. Mike Singletary, let me tell you something. The Mike Singletary hits Mark Bavaro. Mark Bavaro doesn't know where he doesn't know where he is. <laughs> Joe Montana, the 49ers. This is just absolutely. Okay, here's the first letter from De Deardorff Abbey. Uh, uh, Deardorff Abbey. This is uh, this is Chad in North Carolina. <laughs> I, I'm a transsexual. There's no bathroom for me. Uh, and uh, the Bruce Springs is about to do a concert. Can you call Bruce and say, <laughs> call Bruce and say, don't do don't do a concert. Well, I'm not a guy. I love Bruce's music, but I'm not a gutter snipe liberal. <laughs> like you, like I'm not a showbiz liberal. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're born with a cock. Why don't you you that you the cock? <laughs> you're an at your pay, you know. <laughs> I, I can't get behind you. It's oh, a well, bad choice of words. <laughs> Listen, Chad. Yeah, yeah. You know. Uh, first of all, uh, all, all the transsexuals I always see at a Bruce concert. Now they have a bathroom to go to. <laughs> yeah, oh. yeah. Always see it. Every Bruce concert, you see a transsexual yelling out "Sink Backstreet." <laughs> yeah, 
They finally have a bathroom to fucking. <laughs> but, but, I mean, I just don't get it. <laughs> and then I said, fuck it. I, you know, but I, thank God I got tickets for Brian Adams in Houston. <laughs> and then what happened? I go to Brian Adams. He's not playing either. Why? Because <laughs> the guy who changed his cock to a pussy wants a bathroom. <laughs> Bruce Jenner's got to fucking play. Uh, he needs a place to hike his skirt up and shit. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> this is dear <Deirdorf> Abby. <laughs> Whatever. And the girls are getting offended. Whatever. That's what it's <laughs> We didn't say that. We didn't. Yeah. <laughs> Remember the, the look of disdain. That entire bit, which was hilarious. I might, I'll say so myself. <laughs> it was. Thank you, Dan. <laughs> Uh, and, the uh, costume, the jacket, well, the, the, it all. Well, the, the, the mustache started falling <laughs> yeah. off, which is great. <laughs> and guess what? I'm a professional. I come from sketch comedy. Mad yeah, TV, three syllables. <laughs> uh, so I plowed through it. I plowed through it. The mustache is falling. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. The mustache is falling off. And I'm, I don't, listen, I know. And, and the girls don't know anything about showbiz. Your mustache is falling off. <laughs> Sweetie. We're in the middle of a sketch. You're breaking the fourth wall. <laughs> You're breaking the fourth wall, the fourth wall. That's Even it. the way they poured the, your water made me ir irritated they me. They didn't want to do anything I know. for me because I'm new money. <laughs> Imagine the conversations they had on the way to the Hamptons. Oh. So, is it me? Yes, Aunt <laughs> It's not a real name. I don't know her name. I never met her. I'm not allowed to. <laughs> Uh, so, we were talking with some of the other people at the meeting this weekend. <laughs> and they said, uh, quite frankly, it's becoming a little embarrassing. <laughs> Why, Aunt Dorothy, what happened? Well, you know we have the colored driver, Daniel. <laughs> Actually, it's Dalton. Oh, Dalton, yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> no wonder he doesn't come that quickly when I call him. <laughs> Dalton, yes. Dalton uh, actually came up to me and said that you're a gutter snipe slob of a boyfriend. Uh, so, uh, no, he's not your boyfriend. There's, there's a rumor on Reddit <laughs> that you're dating this gutter snipe. I would every day be disgusting. <laughs> oh, thank you. That's not the awful looking retard who gave you the watches. <laughs> the one on the Kentucky Fried Chicken commercial where his head is the bucket. No, that's the other guy. He's the weather guy. Thank God. You don't like those watches, do you? Because <laughs> I'm thinking about giving to the colored guy. Oh, yes, Dalton would love them. <laughs> but we have to wait till the show's canceled. Because we, we pretend we like them. <laughs> oh, okay. Dalton? Yes, I'm calling you. The watches, uh, Christmas of 2016, the watches will come. <laughs> Not this year. This year you'll have to go without a gift again from me. I know you think I'm disgusting. Dalton Cratchit over here. <laughs> oh. Have the car around tomorrow at three. I get my nails done. You know that's true. <laughs> yes, the gook on 38th Street does them. <laughs> I'm sorry, Dalton. I forgot your wife was Asian. <laughs> so, uh, yes, so the, the Dalton comes out to me and says that you've got to say disgusting boss. Oh, it's so disgusting. He's your boss. Was saying something racial the other day. <laughs> It is disgusting North Jersey accent. I nearly fainted. You know how I love Dalton? He's like one of the family. I mean, one of the family who you can't kiss, you know. Not like you kiss Uncle Teddy. <laughs> no. What did he say? Did he, I, mean, I we always tell her he sounds so racist. I won't even discuss it. I'm not going to discuss the bit he said he heard. <laughs> I'm not going to. I might go. I, well, he said, well, I'll get, he said he was going to a parody. I hope you're not involved with this. <laughs> he said he was going to do a parody of Goodwill Hunting called Goodwill Smith. Do you know this? <laughs> no. Yes. A, a black man is a janitor at Harvard. No, an all black college. He's a grambling. Yes, that's the premise, right? <laughs> Dalton said, it's Goodwill Smith, and Will Smith is the janitor, and the, 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 the puzzle that he has to solve on the board is two plus two. <laughs> And Dalton said he uses a step and fetch voice and uh, asked the professor and goes, it took our professor six years to figure this one out. <laughs> and then he solves it and puts four on the board. <laughs> and they can't believe someone solved it. An all African-American college, two plus two. Goodwill Smith. <laughs> Terrible. I've never been. 
I've never been so insulted. The other thing, what, what else did Dalton hear? I have it written down here. Oh, yes. Annie Hall was going to be Arsenio Hall. <laughs> Another movie. Yes. And uh, Woody is dating someone from the dog pound. <laughs> <laughs> really, I happen to have Frank Jai right here. <laughs> yeah, Frank Jai. You know nothing of Frank Jai's work. <laughs> So please find another job quickly. You told me he was just a fat stepping stone to the Today Show. <laughs> By now you were going to be dating Matt Lauer. We're going to be, uh, you know, he's, no. he's our neighbor, you know. I don't trust these showbiz types. <laughs> I'm working on it. It's a stepping stone, believe me. <laughs> we're very good on the air. We did the red carpet at the beach ball the other day. And we almost got the microphone near the person's mouth. Why, Dan, why are you uncomfortable? You're so uncomfortable. I'm not uncomfortable. Yes, you are. <laughs> no, man. I'm not. You are such Trust a, me, I got What a pussy. I, no. You're such a pussy. <laughs> what is wrong with you? What, what? You're afraid of something. It's terrible. <laughs> what am I afraid of? What nothing. are you afraid of? Nothing. You're afraid of something? No. Nope. Like, okay, can we move on or something? <laughs> or no? no, I'm not at all. You don't get a letter you <laughs> anymore from Chris Long, do you? <laughs> no. No, but my point was, the, the, the what was on the audience network? Uh, uh, like the, those shows what was yeah, it called yeah I can't remember I was trying to think of the name he's of the show so, he's so scared <laughs> I wish I remembered it it was the thing, not Sandy Newton it was a couple other things too yeah. that uh, we always had to interview the star of it, and we yeah. had to kiss the star's ass like he was better than me you're lucky to be in my presence faggot <laughs> okay This Fresh is going to be big. This show is going to be big. Yeah, Fresh okay. Direct TV. Yeah, okay. Fresh Direct TV. Tell Artie. Uh, tell, tell, I just can't call. This comes right from the top. <laughs> tell Artie he's got to interview some new Fresh Direct fruit. <laughs> no, it's not a man this time. It's an actual fruit. He's, uh, inter he's going inter to interview a paraquat. <laughs> I got to take a diabetic pill. <laughs> What are you doing? I was looking to see what the name of that damn show was. Oh, Dan, stop it. I don't want it to dance. Dan, put the show on. I don't care. Jesus. I don't give a shit. It's just a bit. Do you want to cut that bit out? Of you You were very nervous. No, I was not nervous at oh, all. You were very like, when I started doing the Chris Long and the girls, and you were like, I can't. I was just wondering if they're back from Phuket yet. You which, know, because that's where they Phuket? went for Thailand. Why? That's where they go for the winter. To see Woody Woodbury? <laughs> no, they don't. Who goes for the winter? Who? The girl, the twins. That's where they they they're on a private island or something. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. When did that happen? They did it when we they knew did them, They did that. Yeah, they did it. Well, no, not when they were doing the direct TV show, but the year after and the year after that. Why? Why? What? They start. I think it's too long to go to Thailand. Why are they doing it? I don't. Why? They go they... there for vacation with their aunt. They do. Yes. Does their aunt fuck little boys? <laughs> oh, Thailand. Uh, yes, uh, I heard your gutter snipe <laughs> boss say I fuck little boy. Clearly, he has nowhere rich people. Sorry, I didn't go to Wildwood, New Jersey, <laughs> and go to the Crusader Motel and get a room. <laughs> yes, no, I, I I go where the blue bloods go. I'm training these girls to have a uh, to wash their undercarriages. <laughs> I always told you, wash your undercarriage. Wash your undercarriage. I only said to them. Wash on the carriage. This is kissing. <laughs> I was watching the show the other day. I started to cry, <laughs> knowing you're in that den of gutter snipes. And I noticed that Mike Buschetti, <laughs> he doesn't look like he's washed his undercarriage. <laughs> he doesn't look human. He's in the, you're in the presence of Neanderthal. <laughs> unclean. Unclean <laughs> gutter, uh, 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 unclean undercarriage. <laughs> you know what your undercarriage is. I, I suppose Artie Lang, who hangs out at a common Third Avenue Irish bar, would call it a taint. <laughs> Dalton, what do you Collins call it? <laughs> your cunt. Oh, Dalton, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry about Collins. <laughs> I'm living in the year before life. 
My only, uh, my only connection to the hip new world are my my lovely nieces. <laughs> oh man, that's pathetic. Yes, we uh, <laughs> we always do an update for you, like we do with Eddie on the show. We did the other. Remember, we gave them assignments that they oh. never did. They wanted to do like we'll do the pop culture. Uh, we'll do the pop culture minute every night. I'm like, go ahead. They never did it. Or the Olympics. All right, well, what do we mean the Olympics? Oh, they were to cover the Olympics. Yeah, they were to cover the Olympics. Well, the bigger thing was the pop culture thing. I was right up there. They go, well, we want to work. Well, do you, you want a segment on the show? You could do that. I mean, we're paying you. <laughs> and they did, and like a month later, I go, what happened to that? You go, oh, well, you, you want us to do it? Uh, yeah. Actually, they're a lot like Dan in that. See, that, that that's what happens. I guess they had to do something months later. It's not done. And then he gets very upset. And it makes sense now. They're all rich kids. They're not used yeah. to orders. Uh, I mean, Dan doesn't want to take orders. And I don't blame him. He wasn't raised to take orders from me. He gives people like me orders. Which is why when we argue, he turns it around. He always yells at me. Because he's not used to it. I mean, you know, he's going backwards in life. He just tell about People like me used to pick up his socks when he was a kid. <laughs> oh, yeah, whatever, pal. You're going to tell me what to do now? Bullshit. Yeah, I didn't do the open. Fuck you. Don't think you're doing a 180 on life with me, pal. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Fresh Direct TV is now uh, <laughs> the new Chris Lowe project. <laughs> but, you know, no, everything else was a money laundering thing for the for the jewel <laughs> of the network, the Dan Patrick show. That was the oh. money maker. And it deserved it. <laughs> The first year we're on the, we go to the Super Bowl in Indianapolis, and you know we're just trying to do our own thing. They gave us the corner of a sports <laughs> bar, oh. and 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 I'll tell you, Chris Long didn't even know what was going on I mean, went, because we went out the first night and we had a big dinner and we went out you know hanging after afterwards and we said we'll show you where we do the show we'll go to the sports bar. We wanted to see it, and he saw it for the first time after we did two shows. He goes, "Oh, we got to change this. Get a new mic in here. The mic didn't work. Nothing." Oh man! Literally, Danny was producing the show the the second night. They wouldn't give up the table because they didn't want to give up the <laughs> food right. money. They didn't want to give up the food money. Danny, like thirty seconds before we went live on the radio, <laughs> a waitress with an attitude picked up a, a used pla- <laughs> a, a finished plate of onion of a uh, of a uh, potato skins. An appetizer, potato skins with cream, with sour cream. I she, totally forgot. Right? Okay, with napkins, they were done. She picked it up. Five seconds later, Dan put a microphone down where where That's the right. where the onion skin, where the uh, potato skins used to be. Five seconds. She wiped it a little bit. The mic was in like leftover blue cheese, like leave you just on stand up on the table. And and uh, put the mic down. We went on the air five seconds later. Five seconds before we announced the show was on. Five seconds before where we, the mic we were talking, in, in, <laughs> that space was occupied by potato skins. <laughs> so long, you know, put on a big show. Uh, but then we get the call. <laughs> Guys, you got to do it. You, you know what? I'm going to give you the honor of We're screening the, 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 new, uh, the new Dan Patrick show sketch. <laughs> <laughs> they get a budget of 100 grand or something. 150 grand every year. Uh, <laughs> every uh, every Super Bowl, yeah, hundred fifty grand. Can that go to the onion skins or the potato skin table? And remember, the bar was not close to the, where the Super Bowl stuff was. Not close. <laughs> the JW Marriott. We might as well stay in New York in yeah. our apartments. <laughs> and Dan was in the La Quinta Inn of the airport. That's right, an hour and a half away. Yeah, and they didn't tell him it was O'Hare Airport. <laughs> Poor Dan. Nick wouldn't let him in his room, so I, I, you know, my cousin Jeff was coming, so I got a room with two beds, and uh, Dan put all the equipment in the room, because so you didn't have to make two trips. I said, Dan, you can put the equipment here, come on. But then Dan had to stay in the room, too. I didn't realize that. So in the afternoon, I was trying to nap. I was sitting on the bed, laying on the bed, and I was in a big fight with my girlfriend at the time. She, We got into a fight right before we came out there, and she didn't come to Super Bowl. So I remember dealing with her, and like she was yelling, you know, we made up right before you went, and you probably didn't really want me to go, and... No, of course I want you to go. This is great, you know. <laughs> the, the entire time I'm looking at Dan holding a printer. <laughs> <laughs> well, at the Liquid Dan is so far test, away. Test, test, yeah. Uh, the test. Liquid, the Liquid Dan is so far away. Can I just put my stuff in the room? I'm like, yeah, but you have to be in the room too. Well, I don't want to go back. Artie, it's going to call. I understand a lot of logistics, and I've been working. 
<laughs> so we get the call that they want to screen the because uh, we're in Indianapolis. <laughs> the Dan Patrick Show has done a parody of Hoosiers. I'm going to repeat that. The Dan Patrick Show has done a parody of Hoosiers, the great movie with uh, Gene Hackman. Basically, uh, the Klan has a basketball team. <laughs> Basically, Basically. Most racist. Basically, uh, Gene Hackman's the Grand Klugel of the Indiana Klan. <laughs> they got a white basketball team. And they, they, hate, they hate shines. <laughs> That's the premise. <laughs> That's the premise. Black people, African Americans, don't let them fool you. That's all that movie is. It's gone with the wind of basketball. <laughs> You're going to tell me you're going to travel 50 miles on a no-good cart and a slow-minded darky? That's a that's a Clark Gable line. A Clark, a Clark Gable line and gone with the wind. And finally, people are like, you know, the movie critic of the uh, New York Times and the New York Post, they finally came out and said, enough every Christmas of showing this racist <laughs> relic. And it's so, it is so racist. Miss Miss Scott and I don't know nothing about birth and no baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Miss Scott, you baby, you, you got to tell me you gonna eat something. I don't gotta have you being too skinny. You ain't gonna be too skinny, Miss Scott. If when them people come a people come a courting you, the gentleman come a courting you, Miss Scott, you gonna be you gonna be nice and chubby. You gotta eat something. You gonna eat something. And you gonna take your nap in the afternoon. They would take the, all the white girls are napping, <laughs> and these little black chicks are fanning them. Oh. And, and you know, you know, I you know, I must have something. Yeah, my, my cousins and I we watch it, and like it was like a like a gut reaction, like a reflex when we saw that. We go, just we, we actually went, oh, the good old days. <laughs> no. it was a time when it was simpler. It was a simpler time, a much simpler time. Oh, Miss God, you gonna get you get your, your food. <laughs> and the, the 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 black guy lived in the house. We used to call the house N word. That was an alley. I, I won't uh, be disgusting and say it here. <laughs> The house nigger, no. but uh, you know, he, that's what they called him. But that guy was so insulting, <laughs> so racist, like a cartoon. He was like Foghorn Leghorn, but or less articulate. Like uh, Thanksgiving when they're broke. Come here, you rooster. <laughs> you the last rooster in all the, all of Georgia, and them white folk gonna sit down and Thanksgiving they're gonna eat you. I'm gonna chop your head off. He's out there running around in the rain. <laughs> How are you not doing this on stage? Well, Miss Scarlet is... Uh, yeah, right. This is the last on stage. <laughs> Fucking millennials will be like, what are you doing? This is terrible. <laughs> this is my stage. The podcast is my new Carnegie Hall. Thank you. That's right. I played the real Carnegie Hall, too, motherfuckers. Take that, Nick Food. <laughs> Let's see Nick Food sell out Carnegie Hall in two fucking hours. A record for comics, by the way. <laughs> Yeah, this guy. He, he's out there. He's trying to find a rooster because the turkeys aren't around because they're broke because all the Yankees came through. The Yankees and the carpetbaggers came through. Took everything. Took Tara, the land. Oh, Miss Scott, as I told you, you must be firm with darkies, but not too firm. Darkies? What the fuck? The heroes, every hero of the movie is a racist. Slave owner, they get you to be sympathetic towards the slave owners. <laughs> Actually, Charlotte, I don't give a damn. So, so yeah, while while the while the, the, the rooster guy is trying to find the rooster in the rain, who you know, white people gonna eat you? Well, I'm gonna chop your head off. You the last good rooster in Georgia. <laughs> You've come down with the fever. <laughs> that scene in the hospital. The, the church becomes the hospital, and the old Southern doctor, the, the, con, the Confederate, go, oh please, doctor, give me something for the pain. <laughs> the overacting, please, doctor, give me something for the pain. <laughs> I've got nothing to give you, son. We're gonna saw your leg off now. <laughs> you just hear, no, no. I, you see, Miss Charlotte with a saw. <laughs> Charlotte, get me my saw. He says it in front of the guy. You mean no, no, no discretion at all? <laughs> oh, get something for the pain. No, son. I got nothing to give you. Charlotte, get the saw. <laughs> it's rusty. Get the rusty saw. <laughs> Did you run it under hot water to disinfect it? We have no hot water. <laughs> get the catheter. <laughs> Can you give me a separate catheter? The saw is going to be your catheter. Oh, after we saw. No. After we saw off your leg. We're going to take the rusty blade off and shove it in your cock hole. Oh, God. And 
that's going to be your catheter. <laughs> Miss Charlotte, get it for me. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Vivian, Vivian Lee will go two feet because I can't watch. She looks away and you hear the guy going, ah! <laughs> We have to go on one of those Ben Mankiewicz cruises for Turner Classic Movies with you doing this. Yeah. Make, make a reference a few more people don't get. <laughs> Dan just said something that only like like older homosexuals know. <laughs> like James Lipton fans. He's been on the show. Yeah, you know, he has whatever. He hasn't been on the podcast. Has he? Who knows? I, We've done 4,000 hours of shows. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> 4,000 hours of a podcast. Sorry, guys. Are we ripping you off still, ass dick? <laughs> 4,000 hours of fucking shows. I'm starting to feel taken advantage of. I feel like they're sitting in our mouths. Yeah, me too. Yeah, you, yeah, me too. I feel like Artie's taking a shit in my mouth. Well, I'd love to do that. You've had full days, and then, you know, at 1 o'clock in the morning, we're doing a podcast because we love you people. Dan, cut that out, what you just said. <laughs> That's so fucking disgusting. I mean, you're pandering. I'm kidding. By the way, HBO's new documentary is on the, the, the photographer Robert Maplethorpe. There could not be a more overrated, disgusting dick lick <laughs> than Robert fucking Maplethorpe. He was hailed as a genius by people. He basically took guys to his apartment in Greenwich Village in the 60s and 70s, tied their balls up with a belt, <laughs> and took a picture of it. <laughs> what the fuck? And he got famous because of people's reactions to it. Some people went, that's gross. And then they said, freedom of speech, freedom of speech. And he was considered a genius. <laughs> the guy would basically torture people and take a picture of it. <laughs> oh, there, and there are these guys who used to fuck him. I told Robert that I'm, an, I, I'm a model. You're not putting that up my <laughs> cunt. <laughs> uh, yeah, I had the operation. <laughs> Robert would, uh, the first time I saw Robert stuff his fist in a penis hole, <laughs> he would lube me up and shove his fist in my penis hole and then take a picture of it. It won best, uh, it won best disgusting piece of shit. <laughs> Maple Thorpe. Could HBO get a little more liberal? Oh, by the way, I love HBO. I'll be on the show. <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot I'm a regular. Uh, should, we, should we edit that out? No, 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 no. I don't care. No one's listening. They've already turned it off. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so, well, I forgot what I was talking about. Meatballs. Yeah, meatballs. What about meatballs? Oh, you that, do the thing with meatballs? <laughs> yeah. That's right. Oh, Dan really wants me to say that. I look at it. <laughs> well, you're very proud of it. Like you, Chef Prudhomme. You have to cook the meatballs. You have to cook them in the sauce. You That's do that. The, no, I know. I know, but we get fresh direct meatballs. <laughs> That's what it all started out with, the fresh direct meatballs. Yes. Meatball. Well, anyway, the Dan Patrick Show did the... I want to get to that. Yeah. Uh, 150 grand, and they did a uh, parody of Hoosiers. I still don't know what the fuck I watched. <laughs> Dan has the sunglasses on or something, and the, 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 the Danettes are cutting down the net, and then he looks at it, and, and it's terrible. <laughs> it's, it's, it's very disconcerting. It, it, right, Dan? What, what was it? It was... I, I don't it know. It was the last scene or something? Yeah, I don't... I, I, I couldn't understand it. And I didn't it, understand I mean, it. Look, the job was great, except for that, because like you ha like you'd watch that, and Chris Long is next to you, and you realize he he gave the money and he loved it, <laughs> and you have to somehow fake that you like it. Two things you had to fake around Chris Long that he had a nice watch on, and uh, and that you liked what uh, Dan Patrick said. <laughs> nice watch, man. <laughs> and that Dan Patrick thing, holy shit! Did you send that to Lauren Michaels? He might use it. <laughs> He might hire you to, to be like the Albert Brooks with the short films. <laughs> you, you, you know, you know, you should, you know, we should have uh, instead of uh, filming that. That's one option: the, the Dan Patrick and the Hoosiers thing. Another thing you should have filmed is you burning one hundred fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> you pouring gasoline on one hundred fifty thousand dollars and lighting a match. <laughs> That's another option. I think Artie's being sarcastic. I had a guy named Sarcastic Sam. <laughs> The morning guy, Big Charlotte. I remember Ken would give us like little pep talks. Listen, after the Dan Patrick thing runs, you got to laugh hard. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, really? Yeah, you know, I was giving myself a little pep talk. Let's go that or all. Good pep talk. Oh, <laughs> uh, by the way, Art, have you seen Chris's new watch? <laughs> <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, Chris, you got that in Rome. No, I got it in fucking Italy, faggot. No. I'm sorry. I thought Rome was in Italy. I'm an asshole. I'm an asshole. 
yeah, Ken was a great. He was a, he's a middle management guy. Ken, yeah, you know, Latin radio is becoming a, an obsolete thing. Ken was a guy. If you were talent, like he kissed my ass on a way. Like again, I'm I'm a I'm a scumbag. I'm a junkie, and he would kiss my ass as if I were the king of England, because I was you know above him because I was talent. I guess I don't know. Oh yeah, I love that shirt. <laughs> you really pull it out. People say you're heavy set. I don't think so. I think you're big bone with abs. But I could change his mind about anything. You go, <laughs> it's raining out. No, it isn't. Of course, it's not raining. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's going to be a great summer. It's not summertime. It's winter, of course. <laughs> no, what what, 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 uh, for, what season do you want me to say it is, right? <laughs> I'll let you know later. Okay. Later on, Arjun can tell me what season it is. <laughs> and, and Ken, God love him, he would every once in a while think he was in that upper management and crack a joke. Well, he is. And then they would look at him like, who the fuck are you? Yeah, well... <laughs> Yeah, it's like, you know, when someone crack when someone thinks they're part of the gang and they crack a terrible joke, <laughs> um, you know, that was Ken. Yeah. We call that person Dan here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh yeah, Ken would uh, kill me. <laughs> oh god, that reminds me of a knock knock joke. Knock knock. <laughs> knock knock. Go fuck yourself. Okay, I'll get to it later. <laughs> Guys, I don't know if you met Shane. <laughs> Shane is going to be typing in something while you're talking. <laughs> it's his show report. Shane's a very talented screenwriter. <laughs> <laughs> this is a stepping stone for Shane. He's the next Jerry Bruckheimer. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> and of course, I just sold my house to all of the P Portland Trailblazers. <laughs> <laughs> he sold his house to a bear to <laughs> They moved him around like a peg. He was the poor the company, the poor guy. Yeah, you know, I was in Alaska for three days until I got the call. <laughs> that now I was going to, to uh, uh, well, I was in Juno for a while, and I got the call that I was going to Anchorage. And as I was unpacking in Anchorage, I got the call that I was going back to Denver. <laughs> so the missus sold the house again. And as we were unpacking the China in Denver, they told us we were, that was a coincidence because I was going to China. <laughs> and my wife jumped out the roof. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, uh, yeah. But anyway, the meatballs with DirecTV. <laughs> uh, Dan does a thing with them. It's unbelievable. He, he just cooks them just right. Matter of fact, we have them in there. Yeah. Let's take a break to do that. Okay. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Oh, he really did it. Dan hates working. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is too much work for him. Well, again, he grew up telling people to uh -huh. work. Yeah, sure. He's overcompensating. Yeah. My four jobs that again, I had. Again, you, like Anderson Cooper has to work. He doesn't have to work. <laughs> oh, he, yeah. He's working. Yeah. So the new open is going to be Dan with a disgusting uh, coffee slurp. And me sneezing. Oh. You got to put the mic closer. Bruh. <laughs> 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 little Felix Hunger. What the hell are you doing? Fa! <laughs> <laughs> We're in a public place. What the hell are you doing? <laughs> that scene in the movie. I oh, know. it's so funny. Uh, <laughs> about that. What the hell are you doing, Felix? Fa! <laughs> <laughs> Clears my sinuses. Fa! <laughs> Did they clear up? <laughs> uh... And then, do you have any liquid to take a disgusting slurp of? This is Dan. Oh, oh God, that's girl. Oh no, no, don't even. So you don't have to try. See, you're over. You don't know anything about comedy. You don't have to do that. It's so grotesque. You just sipping coffee. Just do the first part again. Don't try to be funny again. Oh God. Oh God, that's gross. Oh, it's so disgusting. Oh, oh, you can feel the wetness. <laughs> Dan slurping and then into that. That's our where everybody knows your name. Oh, God. Oh, I can't take it. I haven't eaten for weeks after I Oh, yeah. Okay, so anyway, the reason we're doing this uh, little thing here. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, you, you people on the internet. You yeah, think sh- Mark Maron's going to do the drinking and the snap and the uh, snap rag? No way. Oh, no, because he's got a billion dollars. <laughs> it's all about timing, baby. So you, uh, anyway, um, the, the, the people on, the, on Twitter are so good. That, you know, they, they listen to the old Stern shows. They play them constantly. And a lot of the early shows are uh, 2002, 2003, I guess, are being played now. And these people send me stuff that these bits that they always laughed at and that means so much to them. And it's so touching to me. These people remember where they were when they heard it first and they, they the, the laughs like this. Thanks for all the laughs. And it got me through hard times. That means so much to me, man. It does. Not as much as the money I made doing this, but some, <laughs> no, I mean, honestly, guys, it, it, it doesn't fall on, uh, you know, deaf ears. I really appreciate these tweets. And I forget some of this stuff. I was there, you know, almost a decade. It's very, you know, f- five hours a day. But um, it was so much fun. And in the early days, uh, we had guests on that were, you know, not quite the Paltrow. <laughs> but Courtney Love came in. And again, I-, I remember this because I also talked about it on Conan. I did Conan a week after or less than a week after what you're about to hear. And uh, I told the story on Conan. And it was just, I mean, Courtney Love came in and we, we sort of, well, that was a great thing. We, we thought of bits on the air. It never sort of, nothing was rehearsed. It just kind of organically happened on the air when we would talk. And when guests would come in, all fucked up. There were a lot of guests who would come in drunk back <laughs> in those days and even celebrities. And I used to do a thing where they would seem incoherent. And Freddie would play this circus music sometimes when stuff got out of control and surreal that I always thought was funny. And I started, when someone was incoherent, I started writing down every, like, other word that they would say. And I just had a list of it. At the end of their interview, the bit would be, I'd say to Howard, I can recap what we just heard. (laughs) And backwards, I would read all the words. So backwards, I was reading every other word. And people, a couple of people were so fucked up, they thought I was just, I really remembered what they said, stream of consciousness. (laughs) And Freddie, the genius that he is, after a couple times, realized it's funnier with that circus music. So he added the circus music in the back of me doing that. And it was one of those bits that made Howard just go fall laughing. Like, it was so fun to see that. And he would wait for it. And uh, it was it was one of our favorite things to do. And after doing it for a couple of times, Courtney Love came in. And I remember saying to myself, God, if she's drunk, this could not be. This will be the Babe Ruth of these bits. <laughs> sure enough, she's loaded. Uh, allegedly, hmm. uh, according to me. And she rambled. She rambled for like two hours saying God knows what. But I wrote down every other word. Hmm. And I kind of recapped it at the end. I said, how are I going to recap? And Fred got the circus music after the first couple times. And basically, it was just, it really was odd. It, it was interesting to hear what she said. Like, hmm. it was actually a weird thing. So she thought I was, you know, her soulmate. She looked at me and said, hmm. oh, my God. Hmm. She started repeating it. She realized I was remembering what she said better than she was and she really looked at me and said where'd you get this guy from and howard goes well, he's been on the show he goes he's like my son i feel a connection with you <laughs> she really thought we were like kismet like something was going on because that's how she is she's a lunatic and at the end it was one of those times where howard was trying to get off the air <laughs> he had to leave the air and finally he ended the show but in the end howard described what had happened she came around to the back to hug me and started kissing me and she jumped into my arms. I was holding Courtney Love in my arms while she was uh, giving me a hickey. <laughs> she gave me a hickey, by the way. <laughs> wow. I went home and uh, uh, Dana, my girlfriend Dana, we were, I, she, that weekend uh, she saw a hickey on me. <laughs> and she's giving me, she, who the fuck was Dana? Like, again, adorable, but it sounded like nice. <laughs> who the fuck are you? Who, who are you fucking with with a hickey? <laughs> I had a hickey. First time since like the, you know, 10th grade. <laughs> and, uh, well, me and George the K once. In a <laughs> oh, and I you go, scoundrel. And I, oh, you scoundrel. <laughs> oh, it's dripping. Uh, so I, I said, I, Adrian, I said, Adrian, Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my God. I said, Dana. <laughs> I said, Danielle. Oh, my God. I said, Dan. Oh, my God. There's been Dana. Listen, there's been Dan, Dana, and Danielle in my life. Oh, my God. Wow. Yeah, one of them got pregnant. Take <laughs> pregnant. So uh, I said, Dana, this is going to sound like a, I'm making it up, but and, and no other boyfriend you ever had probably has this excuse, but Courtney Love gave it to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the radio. And I made her, she went back, she heard it on it, she, she confirmed it with her. Dana had a girlfriend. 
who was a Gwinnett hairdresser <laughs> who listened to the whole show cutting hair. <laughs> and she would interpret stuff to Dana, which is the worst, because Dana could only listen until 7.30. She was a school teacher. From 6 to 7.30, she listened that she had to go to class. If something went wrong, oh, the man. hairdresser <laughs> chick would call up. That's the worst. Yeah, so I'd get shit like this. <laughs> so uh, I understand someone thinks Carmen Electra has a nice ass. <laughs> So and so said, I don't So and so said, 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 you fuck Jessica the drunk. No, it's Jeff the drunk. I told him to fuck off. Oh, that's how it happened. The, the uh, telephone game. But uh, yeah, gave me a hit. So it ends up. So we do that bit I was talking about. I, I say, and, and listen to the shit I'm saying. And you can hear the like, interview how we just did with her. It's like, it's, it's really like, I'm, I forgot what the interview was. I'm going to Kirk Cobain, no needle. I didn't kill him. <laughs> And, and the interview that it led to on Conan, I got a cease and desist letter oh. from a, a lawyer claiming to be Courtney Love's lawyer. Because <laughs> on Conan, retelling the story, I said, like, I thought this was a great uh, off-the-cuff one-liner. And they aired it, but apparently a lot of people didn't like it, like her lawyer. <laughs> he said to me, how did you find her? Did you find her smart? And I said she was smart enough to kill a genius. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, it got a ooh into laugh and applause. It got a great reaction. Hmm. And, uh, you know, apparently Judd Apatow wasn't listening that time. <laughs> <laughs> but he was listening when Amy Schumer <laughs> took her hand and escorted her to the front of show business. <laughs> uh, so... I, uh, I, I, it was just, it was, uh, you know, again, and, and the people who reheard this bit, God bless the Stern Show for still playing these things. It's like I'm still on the air, like a syndicated sitcom where only one guy gets the money. <laughs> but, you know, y y people still hear it, and I cherish it. God bless Howard. For and I said it on Twitter to be a part of that. I, said, I love my podcast. The Stern Show was so special because cool. you did all these great stuff, and millions of people heard it. It was relevant, it was edgy, and it was great. And this uh, Courtney Love bit is one of my favorite mornings there. <laughs> and uh, God bless Freddie. I remember this. I remember this. Do you really? Yeah. Yep. I was listening at CKG. Right. And I caught the last uh, hour of the show. And I, I said, I got to go back and listen to the entire thing. So I made them make a tape for me. Was this the first time you started getting jealous of me? <laughs> no. No. Motherfucker. No. I could do that with Courtney Love. <laughs> Anybody could do it. I was so happy they hired you. Because I had just started to work at that station that had Howard Stern, and I, you know, I really like him personally. But Craig Gas, know him personally. Craig oh, Gass, Gass. Craig Gas just didn't do it for me. I'm like, I'm gonna get so sick of this. Well, I disagree in this sense. I understand what you're saying. I mean, you're being nice to me. You're a good friend. You're a loyal friend. But Greg was great on that show in the sense that, and he's gotten better with this, by the way. Greg now tells a great story. Craig, and, whatever. Damn, I call him Greg. He knows. <laughs> I know. I'm, a, I'm above him and short of him. <laughs> not, actually, not really. But I love Greg. <laughs> I do. And I'm going to call him Greg forever, so forget it. Uh, again, chicks correct you with shit like that. <laughs> That's like Brussels Griffon. <laughs> so I love him. I love him. And uh, I'll say gas, because now you got me all fucking anxiety here. Thanks. <laughs> like a broad does. Excuse me, it's Craig. <laughs> Uh, but you know, Howard just wanted him to do impressions and sometimes guests would make the mistake of, you know, as him telling a story and Howard had no patience for it. And I think Greg suffered for it because he was so good at the impressions. That's all Howard wanted to hear. And he, at the time he was, he was the first guy to sit in all the time. Guess was the first guy to get a regular day on the show. He was every Monday for a while. And, uh, he did at the time a perfect Adam Sandler. He did a great Adam Sandler. He did a perfect Sam Kinison, which a lot of young kids don't even know who Kinison is <laughs> anymore. But back then, everyone did. The, the, Kinison might be the best impression I ever heard. When I heard his Kinison, I was in L.A. in the parking lot of the Norm Show in the Warner Bros. lot, and we would listen, and I thought they were playing a tape of Kinison. <laughs> but the best thing he did was Gene Simmons, man. Yeah. And they would do a bit where Gene Simmons would sell off Kiss shit, <laughs> and it's so great. But coming out of the impression, Howard, you know, didn't like it. And uh, Guest has gotten way better at that, by the way. His stories are really funny. He's been on the road for a while, and I, and I love him. He's a great guest. Less, I, he's welcome here anytime because he's an amazing guest. But he was just sort of the competition in the beginning 
not that we ever got evil towards one another because it was a very natural thing, but he uh, he he was he was great. But the problem was he was limited. Like in other words, I couldn't do impressions anywhere near as good as him. My impressions were more like they got in the ballpark and they were kind of funny because uh, they were <laughs> they would they would pick. I would my impressions were like the way Phil Hartman did them. Like you'd pick a certain thing and you uh, a, a quirk and right. you you'd go nuts with it. But his were dead on <laughs> and funny. And that Gene Simmons bit, one of the funniest things they ever did. But it's limited because to sit there all the time with your with your mic on all the time, not that Howard even wanted that to be the case, you need to be yourself a lot. And a lot of these comics don't like being goofed on. You need a thick skin because you're going to get goofed on. And I had that in spades. <laughs> you need to have a lot of loser stories to be goofed on about. It was a whole different perfect storm of shit to get that job. And uh, I had all the fuck up right th- things <laughs> right too. But uh, I, 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 say, I know what you're saying. I disagree, though. I think gas was amazing, and, uh, but limited because of the impression thing. Uh, I was because I was a loser <laughs> with a lot of those stories. Uh, so it was the greatest, uh, the greatest time ever to be there, to, to reach that many people. Like, this podcast is so much fun, but, you know, it, I do it for Monica and Mixer Place. <laughs> and by the way, I don't care. I do it for every, I'll do it for you guys every time. <laughs> By the way, another big thing where you are absolutely... Dan, you want to plug the Stress Factory show? <laughs> <laughs> We're such boobs. <laughs> we do nothing right. We're, this, show, this show's a microcosm of me. We ha- you know what, Dan? Here's what I want to do the next show. You have to go back and get the tape of you all enthusiastic plugging that stuff. <laughs> okay, please? Okay. And knowing how it turned out, a fiery wreck. <laughs> Not a, nobody bought tickets for the show. <laughs> well, because it was the, the, the time. Whatever. That's not what we were thinking when we planned it. Oh, no. people, you, well, Dan, you went, people buy tickets. I brought that up. And then right here you went, no, 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 no. Oh, yeah. You ask Vinny Brand, his man, his the restaurant manager was on a speakerphone. He goes, oh, everyone will come at 3 o'clock. It's, see how, see what it's like with Dan? Uh, nothing's his fault. No, ask Vinny. I'm not blaming you for this, but you were way for it. I wanted to do a remote. Yeah, absolutely. There's a little South Bellini art. You're a big star. <laughs> he just bullshits me. You're a bit, believe me, Hart, they're going to buy fucking tickets, dude. I bet we could do two shows. They're going to buy tickets. It's so great to hear someone so wrong. <laughs> and, of course, Dan wants to go, you know, we'll say there's technical difficulties. <laughs> what an insult to you people, that is. I said to Dan, we're not insulting the audience. Technical difficulties. I, you know, it's a very compact thing we're doing. I'm big amongst a few people. I, the, I, the, the, the truth of the matter is I'm not that famous. <laughs> Nobody bought tickets. 20 people, I think 10 were my cousins. And they wanted comps. So we got to play those, those, those dad going. Like he would cut me off. He'd go, by the way, got to say big show Friday art. Stress factory live remote. Oh, we got to play them. You know what, Dan, write that down. Do not forget to do this. Okay? Okay. Yeah, I'll, look I'll, at his face. I'll, at I'll get it. He got a sniper. <laughs> How embarrassing. Uh, when, you, when, you would, when you would do your, when you had your diabetic peas, that's what I would talk about. Yeah, oh, By yeah. the way. Can't wait. <laughs> Cannot wait. Oh, damn. You get pull that, too. <laughs> pull those, too. Oh, you better get there early. Because <laughs> we are. <laughs> One o'clock. <laughs> We're actually worse than Margaret Show there. <laughs> At least you showed up. People bought tickets. <laughs> Margaret Show. <laughs> People said, "Did you about Margaret Show? She wasn't funny on stage." I'm like, "What's the story?" <laughs> so, uh, so you know, when you guys send this stuff to me on Twitter, what we're going to try to do is because it's YouTube, we'll button some of the shows with these things. We started to do it. Uh, somebody sent me a compilation of me fucking with Eric the Midget, which is so <laughs> funny. It's me fucking with Eric the Midget ten times in a row. That's me and Ralph having a goofy uh, exchange, and it's a throwback to the old show, and it's hilarious. So we're gonna get to that too. I gotta find that on Twitter, but this is new. So uh, we're gonna end this one up. Uh, the latest Dave Juskow uh, show. <laughs> love Dave. A lot of people love him on the internet too, and of course. Uh, Big, big discussion on Reddit about who's funnier, Gino or Juskow. And <laughs> no. Gino Bisconti apparently uh, reeling from the review at, uh, from Sharon Houston. <laughs> no. The entire crew reeling from the Houston review. <laughs> Audie, she was out of line. <laughs>
Adi Stacy Prosper's a friend of mine. She's amazing. And I did it. I did an hour. Mikey did three minutes. I did. I did seven minutes. You said an hour. I did four minutes. <laughs> There's a picture someone sent us on like on stage from that. Night. Okay, the Melrose Improv, the Hollywood Improv. I, you know, I've been there a million times. I've performed there. It's 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 not a huge room. <laughs> so if it's empty, it's kind of like evident. Mike is on stage. <laughs> okay, and he's got his beer up. He's got a weird looking smile on. It looks like a guy who just got hit by lightning. <laughs> And swelled up. And I look at us and I'm like, Bleh. and uh, basically, <laughs> you know, he, you know, here's the look he has on his face. You know, in Animal House, when they ch- when the dog with the horse has a heart attack, <laughs> yes, in yes. Dean Warmer's office, <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, and they sl- they slow motion the horse like, <laughs> <laughs> that's what Machete's face looks like. <laughs> Machete has that look on his face. The horse having a heart attack in Animal House in Dean Warmer's, <laughs> <laughs> and in front of Mike. In a club that holds about 110 people, <laughs> are four glaringly empty seats. Oh, oh. Like they're so empty. Like like the the the, the stuff in the <laughs> middle, the salt and pepper shakers have not been touched. <laughs> Everything's exactly where it should be. Everything exactly where it was when they set up from last night's show. <laughs> not a human being has been near those seats, <laughs> and you don't even see a knee from another person <laughs> sitting. In the, it looks like all of the front is empty, <laughs> and Mike's there with like. <laughs> Oh, people are cruel, <laughs> but uh, we'll get to that too. But uh, so uh, you guys send me a lot of these clips, uh, and you watch the re- listen to the reruns. I can't do it; it's a little too close, to, a little too emotional for me. Uh, but I love that you guys love it and that you send it. So we'll start doing this every once in a while. But uh, here, uh, here to enjoy what I heard on Twitter uh, for you people who might be younger and never heard this. This is from two thousand and two, <laughs> no, two thousand three. This is third, almost fourteen years ago, thirteen years ago. Unbelievable. Hmm. Well, you're about there. It's Courtney Love on uh, on the Stern Show and me doing that bit I talked about at the end of her uh, interview where she was rambling. And Fred Norris with the circus music, the genius Fred Norris. And uh, Benji writing jokes in the back and Howard and Robin being geniuses that they are. And me basically ruining hmm. Dan's life. <laughs> doing what Dan always dreamed of. And me listening in Chicago. Yes, as a rich kid. <laughs> right out of prep school. <laughs> yeah. Take care, one up. Enjoy this, and then we'll see you in the next podcast. Take care, one up. Brush your hair. <laughs> Answer me. This isn't just a sexist thing. You ask me questions, and then you answer them. Okay, I'm going to shut up now, Judge. I don't so, even know the question. <laughs> All right, listen. The question Tell me is, you got a question on this you. is not just sexist anymore. You're an sexist archetype. Sexist archetype, Martha. <laughs> Young, fried. Kleenex, ecstasy, not judging, my own loft, no lipstick, collagen, breast real, little part, bottom, Mexican boots. <laughs> Great. Good. Dog <laughs> died, ate my implant, stretched breasts, unacceptable, 30 girls, Wendy's, sex with, black man, move like, ugly, so racist, big. Standards, values. So tight, Kegel exercise, take yeah. a breath, let's call, Lyle, what was, fathers, LSD, don't want, bring Hank, custody, riding horse, Kathleen Schwarzenegger. <laughs> Rotting insides, intestines. I don't have the time right, to enough. say that I didn't sleep with some of them. Listen to me. You're My a... coochie is nice. Damon Dash. I'm Christmas. happy you have a new <laughs> right, right. Damon Dash. Thank you, Damon Dash. Mark Spitz. Damon Dash. Bumble. Rupert Murdoch. Rupert Retarded. Brad Pitt. Kurt Slap. With hookers. Coke. Coke enemies. Channel. Pearl Jam. Hips are awesome. Butts are falling. Butts not falling totally. Long Island. That's Elf. doing all right. Linda Perry. <laughs> but 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 needs to be on the Pilates machine. Believe Patton, me, you look damn good. Pat and Samantha, Jessica System, Hydrani is live. Jessica Simpson, Jessica Simpson. Chris Milk, Brazil. <laughs> oh Jesus, no. James Addiction. Jesus Biggest Gaysha, Gay, James Addiction, John. Yogurt. Gay. My hips. Graze your nose, my You're hips, dead. falling, bumble and bumble. <laughs> <laughs> well fitting trousers, Howard. And really good hairdo this time. Thank Power you. chair, my coochie, and not you, judging. You look great. <laughs> <laughs> Theme park, ecstasy. <laughs> Can I tell you the, 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 I once saw. Never did. Life. Bugs life, blood tests, a lot of sex, used needles in 80s, all friends are gay. Okay. <laughs> and Barbie pussies, only seen one ever. Ever seen a Barbie pussy just once. 
All right, listen to me. Ten years of stripping us. I want to Courtney, I want to thank you for coming in today. <laughs> Gave it's all great. Gabor, rock star, friends with Allison, Oxycodone, North Context, <laughs> My Child, Through Pill, Social Worker, CNN. North <laughs> <laughs> Context. <laughs> Press Yo. release, Beverly oh, Hills, Lunch I like Snack, you. Diet. I like you a lot. Black Go. Guy at Wendy's. <laughs> going, going, come on, you're great. This is great. Linda Perry, Road Songs, Patty and Samantha, Women Give, Jessica Cincy, I'm Happy. <laughs> ADT, okay. ADT. There he is. Divine bass player. <laughs> okay, wait, Fairy, Fairy, Emily what? Emily what? Fall, Spring, Autumn, Blossom. Emily, Dot Kong, Never Adrian, you. Adrian. Ellis, Father gave LSD when I was four. Right, Mar Martha, <laughs> Chartreuse, Standing Above. I could talk to you all night. Lilac, Sharpshooter, Sick, Judge, I can't Adrian, talk to Chelsea. Him. Judge was Archetype, Martha Stewart. <laughs> judge was, feels guilty a little bit. Judge, Imperious, Judges are. Rockstar, Not sexist, like. hope they stop picking on you. Archetypes, Martha Stewart. Are you going to be at night? All right, I got to go. You guys can sit here and talk. Smart the story took me to flower shop. Very nice. I want to thank you. You've just introduced me to like my soulmate. Yeah. <laughs> She's going to marry you. You can write with him. Dance for you. Hips are butts falling. Hips are falling. Hi, sweetie. Keep going. Go. Keep going. Kurt Cobain never used drugs. <laughs> Kurt Cobain, no sexual experience. Enemies with. Jane's Addiction. We're saying Supermodel. We you found it. yourself a girlfriend, Artie. Supermodel, Jane's Addiction, uh, Pearl Jam, used needles in the 80s. Uh, caps and vaginal and labia, surgery. And, this is great. You know, <laughs> this is what's thank I want to thank Courtney Love for coming in today, Robin. Or not. And Kate Hunter versus Who is over in Artie's, climbing on Artie. <laughs> Live side by side, foreskin not. It was a great show today, a lot of fun. <laughs> Give her some sex, Artie. I am. <laughs> Pull her panties down and do it. Like the lesson we said, you know, this guy's bullshit. He's running. He's Anarman, Jewish. Um, wait, 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 Catholic. Oh my God, Artie is picking up Courtney Love. Not Troy. Jewish, Catholic, Ritalin, Lucky, Kathleen, Schwarzenegger, riding a horse with my kids. The tombs, the tombs, the tombs. The tombs. The tombs. The tombs. <laughs> All right. We're going to go and thank you, and we'll see you tomorrow. America's sweetheart. America's sweetheart, Courtney Love. Uh, Courtney Love.